in our local school. Those performing for us tonight are Ezell Harding Parrots, Kim Mulligan, Paul Gentry, with friends Brian Patrick, Taylor Wilson, and Rodney Turner. If you would all please stand. We will be led in our invitation by Ezell Harding 2010 alumnus, Weston Gentry, followed by the National Anthem. Let us pray. Our most kind, loving, and heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for this fall weather where we can come here and play the great game of football. God, thank you for this homecoming event where we can all come together and renew old friendships. God, I pray that you keep our players safe tonight for Ezra Harding and Franklin Road. I pray that they play with an attitude of sportsmanship and they glorify you in everything that they do tonight. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's game is being played under the rules of the Tennessee Secondary School Athletic Association. Our players and our coaches understand the requirement and the need for good sportsmanship. And we ask all of our fans tonight to root loudly for your team, but to remember to abide by the rules of good sportsmanship in our game tonight. The officials for tonight's game at referee Matthew Nix, umpire. Mark Dunn, Linesman Chuck Stevens, Line Judge Eddie Arnell, Back Judge Mark Meyer, Clock Operator William Porter.
The captains for Brooklyn Road Academy tonight, number two, Dalton Conchini. Number 15, Jose Baldwin. Number 18, Matt. Here we have a lot of goals that we have set for um, all three schools at Ezel Harding. Um, I think the, the first and primary goal is to um, revitalize a, a spirit and a culture of, um, of faith here. And uh, this place has always been known for being a place where um, God is praised and the Bible is taught. for this school year is that we build a loving and safe environment for the students. Um, I think back to when I was a child and all the inspiring teachers that I had and I really just want them to feel like they matter and that they can make a difference. So if I can provide that here at Ezel Harding then that would be what I would hope for the school year just for them to be successful and um, to have a really fun time in elementary school. Spiritual goals in athletics, I think, are a unique aspect that we have as a Christian school. Uh, we, again, as, as I've said before, we don't just play to win. Uh, wins and losses, they, they come and go. But the, a lot of the spiritual aspects that you're able to learn in terms of uh, humility, in terms of, of working hard and, and taking care of your bodies and all the, the other elements, uh, you know, I think the coaches do a fantastic job here of, of of approaching everything that they do with a Christian aspect in terms of praying for a game and giving glory to God when you win. And um, um, those types of aspects are things that I think are very unique at a Christian school that we're able to really, really focus. And we are live. Wanted to uh, welcome our listeners and viewers who are at home catching this live streaming over the TSSAA website of the Ezel Harding uh, Christian School Eagles tonight versus the FRA Panthers. My name is John Sullivan. I'm here joined tonight by my friend and cohort, uh, Mr. Robert Lindsay. Robert, it's a great night for football, isn't it? Oh, it's a beautiful night. I think it's like 75 degrees out there. These kids are going to hit hard. They're going to run in some great weather. Hopefully they're conditioned, well, ready to go. It looks like FRA has won the toss here, so that's what we're watching. Our captain's out on the field. Very good. You'll notice that we've got a large crowd on hand tonight. Uh, Robert, this is our homecoming night. We've got a lot of alumni on campus. Uh, a lot of families come out to support Franklin the Eagles in this, uh, in this game tonight. It looks like an Ezel Harding will get the ball uh, receiving in the first half, and that means that the Panthers will get the ball in the second half. Uh, a couple things to look at tonight before we get uh, the opening kickoff. We've got senior night going on. Uh, seniors were our captains tonight. We will do a final senior night toward the end of the season, but with this being homecoming, uh, our four seniors that are playing tonight were our captains. Um, captains tonight were number 24, Brian Allison, number 20, Cranston Gentry, number 21, Blake Smotherman, and of course, big number 71, Justin Woodard. All four of these guys, seniors and leaders on this uh, Ezel Harding offense and defense. And it's looking like we're going to have the uh, intro of our players. They're going to be running in through various uh, screens here. The Panthers, look at that well designed crazy looking banner right there they're going to run through. Yeah, it always looks like the other team brings bigger banners to I don't, at I don't get games. It. I don't either. Those things have already been ripped in the middle, but if it gets them pumped up, that's great. No I know, whatever team. whatever works. We've got kickoff in a minute 45. It's a great night here in Antioch, Tennessee. Ezel Harding playing the FRA Panthers. We're going to cut to a commercial and be ready for kickoff here in about 35 seconds. Please stay tuned.
And we are back live tonight. I want to uh, make the announcement our production tonight is done by our uh, broadcast class. We have several students, 8 to 10 students, that have been working hard all year learning to run broadcasting at sporting events. Uh, they streamed Chapel Live yesterday. Uh, they're running this entire production. They've asked me and Mr. Lindsay in to uh, commentate tonight, but this whole production is done by these students. Isn't that great? I, I think it's great. I think it's one of those things that will distinguish us in the long run uh, against other other schools. I mean, it's one of those things that's a huge benefit for Esau Hayden. It is. And these are skills that these students can use definitely into a career as they head to college and uh, one day try to have a career maybe in broadcasting or something in the producing world. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, well, we've got our cameras on the sign. Ezel Harding Eagles about to take the field. The clock has struck zero. It's time to get them on the field. Let's stay tuned. And there you have them. They look fired up tonight, don't they, Robert? They do. Real men wear pink. It's looking like it's some uh, crazy <laughs> exciting stuff over there today. It does. It does. I was talking to Coach Hall earlier today. He said that the guys are really prepared for this game. They've been fired up since uh, Monday, honestly. They've been all just really charged up for this game. Wanted to announce our coaches tonight. Our Eagles are led by Coach Calvin Hall uh, and then assistant coaches Reggie Grimes, Ashley McCrary, Terrence Quattlebaum, and, of course, R.J. Matthews. This is a good staff that Coach Hall has assembled. Uh, the guys look ready tonight. Where we are not many in number, uh, we play with a lot of heart out there. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. We've got... One coach is going to be up here in the box, actually kind of opposite on the side of us, uh, who's going to be calling down some of the defensive plays as well, whereas uh, Coach Hall is going to be down there running a lot of the offense as well. Sure thing. Uh, kicking off for the Panthers tonight, number 42, TJ Norris, will be kicking off. Back to receive deep, two Eagles. Number 34, Daniel Williams. And 44, Dorian, Dorian Banks. Fair catch called for. Yeah, he kicked off short. Didn't look like he wanted to get the return from either Banks or Williams tonight. Daniel Thompson calls for the fair catch. Daniel Thompson's going to receive the fair Ball catch. Ball will be down nine. first and 10 for Ezo Harding. And they will have the ball on the 35-yard line. Caldwell, six-foot yeah, sophomore, Caldwell in the center for the Eagles tonight. will take the snap tonight. He's in a two-back set with wide out either side. The give does go to 21, Blake Smotherman, and he's met by a whole host of FRA well, Panthers to tonight. It's going to be interesting for Blake Smotherman throughout this entire game. He, uh, he actually broke his wrist in his left hand. Uh, so well, it's going to be it's going to be kind of difficult to kind of hold on to that ball, uh, especially transferring through. Blake likes to move around a lot. He does. He likes to cut the ball back quite a bit. It's going to be interesting to see if any of these Panthers try to take a swat at him as they make a tackle, see if they can dislodge the ball. That's exactly right. Two back set again for Caldwell. He steps under the center. The give again is to 21 Blake Smotherman. Looks like he slipped. And uh, they're going to have him tackled with a two-yard loss. We just lost two yards in that play. Moving the wrong direction tonight. That's exactly right. Dorian Banks comes in. Probably going to line up either in the backfield. It is looking like he's going to line up in the backfield with Blake Smotherman coming off. Caldwell steps under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. Receiver either side. They've got a big set. Two tight ends in. Caldwell the give to Banks. He's got to end around. Does he have room? Brought down. Brought down by number six. Walker Casey for the FRA Panthers. He's a Harding is a run-heavy team. So uh, if FRA can kind of find a way to set the edge, the question is going to be whether or not we can brutalize him in the middle. But it's going to be kind of tough throughout the rest of the game. It is. It seems like they've got Another seven in the box every play. That's exactly right. Uh, so we may have to throw the ball to loosen that defense up a little bit. Line. It will help the run game get going. I believe that's uh, Colt Ellis Colt back there. Ellis back Colt Ellis does step back deep to punt. We've got deep number to receive number two, Dalton Punkillian. Ellis' punt right up the middle, low line drive. It's going to bounce about the 45-yard line, scooped up by Punkillian and met by a host of Ezel Harding Eagles at the 40-yard line. I know Coach Hall will be pleased with that coverage there. Robert. That's exactly right. Hit as soon as he touches the ball. Driven back, actually, even a yard, too, which is great. Yeah, that's great kick coverage right there. Yeah, there's a great chance they're going to give him forward progress on that, which is wonderful. That's perfectly fine with us. Stop him early, go to town. That's right. This is going to be a critical set of downs here to see what Ezel Harding's defense is going to do with FRA's just skill players because they have a lot of skill players. They do. 
Quarterback sets, gives the ball off to the running back up the middle for a short gain of three yards. And he is brought down by a defensive lineman. Looks like number 71, Justin Woodard, made that stop there. The senior is going big, man. Yeah, they are. You know, after playing Knox Webb last week, I believe the defense has a bad taste in their mouth. Too many points were scored last week. I think they're ready to step up this week. That's exactly Make a right. stronger stance. Quarterback Matt Hissong moves under center. He's got two backs behind him, two receivers to his left side, our near side. Looking, looking like we're dropping back, playing the cover two formation here on we defense. Are. His song gives to his running back. He's cut down by the linebackers at the 45-yard line. Another short game, but they've got a third and five right here. Robert, I think we've got a chance to stop them three and out and get the ball back. That's exactly right. Limit that, court, limit that running back down to two, hopefully less than three yards. Make these manageable third downs for us. It does. Play some really good defense here. However, they are been they have been known to throw on third down. His song steps in. He's got one back behind him. He steps, drops back. It's a draw play. Draw play. Running back 25 is met hard by number 15. Yeah. Elias Kane. He's dropped immediately at the line of scrimmage. It's going to force the Panthers into a punting situation. What a great defensive stop there, Robert. That, that was good. That was a good open field tackle right there. That's what you're looking for in your defense. It was. It looked like he had the edge. He's going to come left and take the edge. And Elias Kane met him hard and didn't let him go anywhere and tossed him to the ground. It's looking like Ezo Harding is, is faking like they're bringing pe pressure, might bring pressure here. They do. They bring pressure and drop two. Back to receive 44. Dorian. Dorian reverses field and is met by several Panthers. Ball will be down at the, about the 22 yard line when the ref blows the whistle. Dorian Banks Not a bad return for Banks return. there, but the coverage just uh, was too good for him. It stopped him before he could even make any progress. It's definitely better than being pinned inside your 10 or inside the 20, though, so we'll take as many yards. They are going to give it forward progress. This is beautiful. It's only a couple inches from the 25. This, sure this is excellent. They sure did. Looks like it could be a game of field position tonight. Number nine, Caldwell gives to Blake 21. Smotherman. Blake Smotherman, he gets around the end, has some running room down the left sideline and tripped up at the last minute. Well, this is, gets to be the first time we say this, but that's time for an O'Charlie's first down. First down, yeah, big first down run there. It looked like we had taken him up the middle just enough, sucked those linebackers in. He took the ball around the end, made a great run. Uh, that one's good for about 14, 15 yards there. Kind of seems like the exact opposite of what FRA did on the first drive they did on this one. They did set the edge. They let him go. Blake Smotherman just took it. And when Blake can run, no, nobody can really catch he's, up with him. He's like a little video game character. Caldwell gives to Blake Smotherman again to the left side. He fights for additional yardage. I think he got three or four there. The question is, my question was, who was that blocker? I, it looks like Cranston Gentry coming over there. Came around, just blocked the coming in the lineman. Boom, open up that hole so he gets literally four yards on that play. Yeah, he had to fight fight for every yard he got. I like how he falls forward. You're never going to see Smotherman fall without a fight. He falls forward. Uh, another eye, eye formation set. Caldwell sets in under the center. He's got receiver either side. And it's a fumble snap. Caldwell does seem to recover that and dive forward. Let's see if we have official call from the referee. He does say that it does belong to Ezel Harding. Just a poor snap there. Those are the one things we don't we don't want to beat ourselves no. in this game. Absolutely not. Brings up about a third and seven here. Allison comes off uh, onto the field tonight. Number eighteen, Zane Williams. Caldwell steps under center. He's got eye formation receivers either side. Takes the snap, takes a drop, and throws the ball incomplete. Looks like he was trying to go out to number 80, Rayshon Perry. Number 55 on uh, FRA was just right in his face. He did. A lot of pressure up the middle from FRA. Looks like if they think we're passing, they're going to try to blitz up the middle. Uh, we'll see if Coach Hall and uh, Coach Grimes can make some adjustments to, to fend that off here later in the game. I'll bring up fourth down for the Ezel Harding uh, Eagles, fourth, fourth and seven, Eagles, deep to cut, Colts, Ellis. Back to deep to receive, senior Dalton Ponquilia. 
end over end kick falls at about the 33 yard line he's gonna take it picked up he does grab it he's second punt in a row he's trying to make a play on it I, i'm loving ezel's coverage though because they're right there this kid it looks like every time he's going to touch the ball he's going to try to run it he does he's right has been there every time sure was hey, that's a good game of field position we took the field we took the uh reverse field position and uh, the Panthers will have an opportunity to try to drive on Ezel Harding, but to this point, uh, they have not been able to do so. Number two, number, sorry, number eight. Number 18. 18, his song takes the snap, give up the middle for no gain for the Panthers. Met at the line. That is on the for the Panthers. Met at the line of by Ezel Harding. Uh, push the for a game of two, the second they get to the, the the play pretty quickly. It looks like they're trying to get their plays called in from the sideline instead of huddling up, trying to see if they can catch our defense off guard. His song takes the snap. They give up the middle, and he is dropped down again. I think he was hit first at the line and then finished off by our linebackers. I believe he was tricked up by number 20, Cranston Gentry. Cranston's a good linebacker, Robert. He makes yes, a lot of plays. He real reliable. He keeps the shoulder pads low, his head back, and he's able to make good stops. He's all Harding on defense. The Panthers take the ball at the 27. His song gets the play from the sideline. He's got two receivers to his right in the I formation. He steps under center for the snap. The give is up the middle again. Looks outside. Has nowhere to go. He does clear some space down the right sideline. Makes a great move, and he is knocked out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Man, Robert looked like there for a second that play was dead. He just found life. That's exactly right. He kept his feet. We were throwing some arm tackles out there. It just wasn't helping us. Man, he got hit twice. I remember twice behind the line. Was not able to, uh, to bring him down. He kept legs under him. Took off down the right sideline. That was a big game for the Panthers. Moves the ball down to the Ezell Harding 37 yard line. First down, Franklin Road Academy. His song gets the calls in from the sideline. He has two receivers to his left. His back is Hosea Baldwin. His song takes the snap, fakes the option. But well, it looks like he had his legs tied up for no gain. Somebody was down there in the middle of the pile, number 34 on 34. our team. Great stop for Daniel Williams there. He's been in on a couple plays already tonight. Yeah, he has. He chased down that last runner. Sure did. From the opposite side of the field as well. He's got wheels on him. You know, I believe we have this bend but don't break defensive mentality tonight. His song takes a signal again from the sideline. He's got two receivers to his left. Dalton in the background, back quick field. throw, quick out to number 23. His receiver Good is Colby Walker. Pass is complete. He gains a short gain, but maybe enough for a first down. Let's see where they spot the ball. It looked like Dorian Banks, number 44, was on that play, and also number six, who is actually an eighth grader, Casey Perkins, was on the tackle as well. It's great. Good to see young talent come out and playing for us. That's exactly right. It's going to bring up third down in about two. Panthers just short here on that quick hitter. Brings his song under the snap, receives a sign. He's got two men in the backfield. Throws the fade route outside. He, he looks like he's got a man. Referee gives a signal, calls a touchdown to number two, Dalton Ponkilia. This on pass complete to number two, Ponkilia. Good for a Frederick Road Academy touchdown. So that's going to be the first score of the night. FRA strikes first with a good looking ball thrown up to the fade route. Couldn't get there in time. Maybe a small push off there. Uh, single coverage on the outside, and they just got the ball over the top. Possibly, but of all the sides you're going to do that on, you're definitely going to do it on the FRA side. Absolutely. The field. Absolutely. At the end of the day, the best part about that play was that throw. Though. That throw was just on target. It was. Had a lot of air under the ball. Diving catch from uh, the receiver made a great catch. And the kick is good. And the kick is good for FRA. Punchilli knocks it through. Brings our score 7 to 0. With that, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
second ten. At the far end of the stadium will be manned. And we are back live. Just after that score, it brings our score to seven to nothing in favor of the RFR Panthers. Uh, Robert, not a bad looking drive they had there. Uh, looks like we had him stopped, uh, and they get a long running gain onto the right side, about 20 yard gain there, and then the deep pass got us, and just like that, they're on the board. You know, it's at the end of the day, there's there's some things that we can take away. I mean, we had some great defense, other than two very large chunk plays. So if we can hold on to that, we're going to do okay. Absolutely. Uh, T.J. Norris in for the kick. Handled well by number 40. What was that? 45 by the Ezel Harding Eagles. Ezel Harding from the 12. Jason Clark. Uh, he's had that really long. Sorry, Jason Clark number 12 receives that ball. Gets a block on the inside. Turns the ball to the right and has a nice gain on that play. You know, if we're running field position here, this is going to be the best possible place we can do it. What we do need to do is answer back with a good touchdown. We really do. We need to put together a little offensive drive here. Look for a big play here to Blake Smotherman. He gets pretty amped up and we're down. Caldwell comes under snap, receiver either side. He gives up the middle to Smotherman. Met at the line by FRA Panthers. That'll be a gain of maybe one at the most. Let's see the kind of spot they give him. Uh, not very favorable. I think he's going to just consider no gain on that play. It's about right. He was met immediately. Number 62 was running in there, 56. And several of the Panthers come middle. in to close that out. Cedric Call, uh, Ryan Caldwell comes and gets the signal from the coach. Lines up again with a two-man setback. He's got receivers at either side. Let's see if we throw the ball here or if we're going to line up and run again. Step back. Caldwell scrambles. Gets about two yards, but then is finally met by number 74 of the FRA Panthers, Cameron Dijon. And he is dropped for a short gain there. Looks like he had some room to scramble, but that hole closed up pretty quickly. It's one of the better uh, things about Ryan Caldwell. If he can kind of get his accuracy down, he's extending the play, which, which by the way, means that your receivers are most likely going to be wide open. That's right. So if he can keep his eyes down the field, get rid of that thing their receivers it's gonna those guys can't hold on to our receivers the entire time that's exactly right Caldwell under the snap receiver either side looks like a blitz up the middle from C uh, FRA he still stands up can't get rid of the ball and he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage number nine Caldwell with a loss of about 10 on that play uh, that's just great coverage. Robert, he looks down the field trying to make a passing play, and it's good coverage by all the FRA Panthers. Uh, they blitzed up the middle, but then that linebacker looked like he was in spy formation. Closed in, took Brian Caldwell out before he could even make a play. That's exactly right. So with that brings up a long fourth down, fourth and 19 uh, that we're seeing here. And so Ellison to punt. No good end over end punt. This time, fair catch called. I think you heard us talking about him, Robert. Maybe these FRA coaches right next to us heard us as well. So <laughs> They may have. That, with that, Dalton Ponkilia receives the fair catch. Ball will turn over to the FRA Panthers, and they'll start their drive at the 30. Uh, looks like 33-yard line for their third drive of the night. So with a minute 28 left, FRA Panthers will take possession of the ball. Big 4-3 defense of the Ezel Harding Eagles uh, there to face uh, quarterback Dalt, uh, sorry, quarterback Hilson. I, I don't know if anybody can see this on the replay, but what happened here was two of the linemen just pulled around right there and just took out two of the Ezel Harding players, which, I mean, Brilliant blocking scheme. That's why he's going to get 11, 12 yards on that game. Sure is. When they pull those guards around the end, it's hard for the other side to catch up and get extra blockers and run that direction. Uh, it's a nice trap play that they ran there. Still running hurry up to force basically Ezel to keep their defensive scheme in. That's right. Can't change it up. Still in a 4-3 it looks like. We've got a linebacker kind of trying to make a blitz on the right side. Hillsong under the center to receive the, the snap to nice. pitches to Dalton. He has room to the right side, but is brought down just after getting a first down. Uh, again, that's Hosea Baldwin that gets the, the pitch there around the end. Uh, I didn't see who brought him down. Did you see who brought him down? I did not. Looks like number 12, Jason Clark, made the play there, knocked him out of bounds, which will bring up a first down for the FRA Panthers. Ezel actually had a chance in the backfield there, but the uh, the quarterback, number 18, came around yeah. and actually blocked for him. His song, man, he is he's a pretty good player. He's delivering the ball when he needs to, making blocks when he needs to. 
Uh, let's see if uh, the Eagles can make a big stop here. Try to shut them down before the end of the first quarter. Give to number 15, and he is met quickly at the line of scrimmage. 24, Brian Allison makes the, makes the stop there. Great play by Allison. He's a defensive back. Don't know if they blitzed him there or not, but he uh, he met the running back just as he got to the line of scrimmage. Great play for him. Brings up second and nine as the first quarter will come to an end. Beautiful night in Antioch, Tennessee. He's a Harding homecoming. The score is 7-0. to zero. Uh, When we come back, FRA Panthers will have the ball, and we're going to take a quick 30-second break. Stay tuned. I'm here live with uh, freshman at Ezell Harding, Aviana Goodner. Aviana is a member of our uh, Lady Eagles volleyball team and a great volleyball player at that. Aviana, thanks for coming up to the booth with us tonight. Uh, let's see if we can get her volume checked. Can you say something one more time, Aviana? Hello. Okay, I think we've got good volume now. Thanks for coming up with us. She has something that she wants to read to all of our listeners tuning in. Go ahead, Aviana. Okay. This week was full of spirit to prepare for homecoming. The days consisted of Dress and Press Day, Tacky Day, Twin Day, The Class Theme Day, and Crazy Red and White Day. My favorite day is probably Tacky Day because the creations that people put together are quite interesting. The, ball. the week was filled with impressive and compelling outfits. Also, every day they count to see which grade has the most participants and who's the best friends. Even though everybody doesn't participate, the week is still fun and entertaining. Very good. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Goodner. That's an excellent assessment for the week. I know we've had a lot of fun this week. What was your favorite day that we had? Tacky day. Tacky day, yeah. We saw some pretty funny, elaborate costumes. Um, good participation by all the school. Uh, why don't you, since we got you on live, tell us a little bit about what we have coming up this week in volleyball. Well, um, volleyball teams going to district. Hopefully, we come in first place. Yes. We've won 20 games. So That's right. With a big win last night against Trousdale County. Mm -hmm. Uh, both the JV and the varsity teams won, and so we do have district game coming up uh, this coming week. And then let's see, if we win that game, we will host on Thursday afternoon the next district home game um, for the district tournament. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Aviana. We're going to turn it back over to uh, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, but another great interview with one of our students, Aviana Goodner. Have a good night. Okay, we're back live. Uh, the score is 7 to nothing in the beginning uh, minutes of the second quarter. Ezel Harding on defense here. Uh, the Panthers have put together what looks to be another promising drive uh, if the Ezel Harding Eagles need to stop this uh, before they get in the end zone again. That's exactly right. However, it is a fourth and three here because they, they ran a fullback. His song with a long fade again. The catch is made again by number two, Dalton Ponkilia. Runs a great route. The ball comes in over the top, makes a play just over the defensive back, 24, Brian Allison. Looks like we had good coverage, but just another perfectly thrown ball. That's exactly right. I mean, outside shoulder, right there, right in the sidelines. He just happened to get a foot in. That's, he did. That's just well done. He looked like he could have been out of bounds there, but the referee is much closer than we are. Says it's a good catch. And uh, once again, he's tossing that ball way up there and making good plays. And, and once again, they're jarring for the ball down there. It could have been a push-off, might not have been a push-off, but at the end of the day, the ref's decision, you got to hold to it. Absolutely. Hissong in under the take the snap. He's got two receivers left side. They run a counter play to number 15, and he scrambles and scrambles to get down to the two-yard line. Good carry there by Baldwin. Uh, counter play, he fakes right and then takes the ball left over the tackle. Uh, has a little bit of space, but shook free and uh, got about a good four-yard gainer on that one. Ball looks like it's placed on the two-yard line, three-yard line maybe. Bring up a second and goal for the Panthers. If we need the defense to step up, Robert, it's right now. We That's exactly right. His song has a sign from his coaches, steps in under center. He's got two backs behind him and then one receiver to his right. Do Big. you throw it here? No, handoff. Nope. He gives, barely touched into the end zone. That'll be a touchdown to FRA. Uh, it's good blocking up front. Looks like they've got a good scheme drawn up. That's exactly right. 
With that, number 15, Hosea Baldwin takes the ball into the end zone for their second score. We'll bring our score to 13 to nothing. Uh, Punchily on to kick the extra point. So we'll pause, see the results of this kick. Ponchilia's cuck is up, and referee signaled that it is good. And with that, that brings our score 14 to nothing with 9 minutes, 55 seconds in the first half. We're going to take a quick 30-second break. We'll be right back. I want to take this opportunity. You know, we want to take this chance to uh, thank O'Charlies. They've uh, they fed our guys so often uh, for these home games. They uh, just great chicken tenders. They really do. It seems like they've got the uh, market edge on chicken tenders and honey mustard dressing. Um, they're really good to this school. They're right down the road here next to Hickory Hollow Mall, and uh, we feel very blessed to have them. Such a good partnership with them. Uh, before we receive the kick here, I do want to make a quick announcement. Um, we do have a production of the Christmas Carol by our fourth and sixth grade musical theater group. Uh, go ahead and mark your calendar, Friday, December 7th, 7 p.m. Uh, we will have that performance on campus. Quick, quick kick is given. Low liner right into the front line of the uh, receiving team. Ball was handled a little bit loosely, but then ended up in the hands of the Ezel Harding Eagles. Will be a first and ten at the 44-yard line for the Ezel Harding Eagles. All right, we need something here. There's uh, there's no nice ways around it. We we have got to get something here. We really do. Um, Caldwell in to take the snap. He's got Smotherman in the backfield. Got a big set. Tight ends in left. Let's see if he gives the ball left here. He does. Smotherman gets a good block good on the blocks. outside. Makes a good run, gets out to about the 44-yard line, uh, maybe the 46. Brian Allison with a great block out there as a wide receiver. He sure did. You don't see wide receivers making big blocks, but he held his man up long enough for Smotherman to take the ball around the end and uh, makes it another O'Charlie's Ezel Harding first down. O'Charlie's first down. That's exciting. I think having the extra tight end on the left side proved for some good running room. Caldwell comes in with two backs. This time he's got a three wide out set. We're going to spread them out a little bit and see if they try to run under this set or if they're going to throw the ball on first down. Caldwell gives to Smotherman, makes a move, but Ken, oh, does make an escape of number 27 and then trips and falls at the 40-yard line. Oh, that was tough to see. He looks like he had a lot of running room and couldn't keep his balance. Looked like that 40-yard uh, line jumped up and bit him. It did. It <laughs> Turf monster got yes. him big time. Turf monster. Uh, he was, uh, looks like he had escaped the big reach of number 27 from FRA Carter Clark. Uh, spun around opposite field to try to reverse the field, make up a little ground, but couldn't get uh, around. Looks like the referee or uh, that turf monster. I don't know if we can give a tackle to the ref. I'm not sure if that counts <laughs> We'll see if we not. can put that in the stats. Uh, this brings up a tough second down, second 23 for the Eagles. Don't know what Coach Hall has in the playbook for this one. The signal is in, and it looks like we're going to have a game. We're going to have a delay game on the Ezel Harding Eagles, called in by the referee. That'll be another five-yard penalty. In our stats, we actually have the turf monster has now got one tackle, <laughs> as we can see. Excellent. I know this field's in great condition. I saw Jason Charlton out myself today uh, mowing this field. He keeps this field manicured like my wife's fingernails, uh, Mr. Lindsay. It is just uh, excellent the way he cuts this grass on our Toro laser-graded grass cutter mowing machine. It's not very often that we talk about your wife's fingernails. I'm not no, lie. it's not. The toss out to the left side to number 21, Smotherman. Minimal gain, about three yards. He got a short gain there, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It's going to bring up another very long third down for Ezel Hardy. I don't know how many plays you have in the book in uh, high school for a third and 27. Yeah, I, I think maybe if we had a, I think maybe if we had a little more manageable third down situation, we could be a little more creative with the play calling. Let's see if Coach goes conservative here and tries to play field position, or let's see if he actually tries to make a first down on this play. 
Caldwell has a signal. He has three receivers, two to his strong side, one to his left. The pitch goes out to 21 Smotherman. He does pick up a head of steam. It looks like he's got room to run. Met by the free safety at the original line of scrimmage. Knocked down by number two, Ponkilia. Incredible. I mean, 18-yard run. It did. He made up some ground there. I think they were expecting a pass play instead. Great sweep play to Smotherman. Nearly made the first down, but it's going to knock him down short to the original line of scrimmage. It does look like, no, it does look like we're bringing out our punt team. Yeah, this is a, a really tough to manage fourth down here. I think maybe a little closer coach would have gone with it. Uh, but he does bring out uh, punter this year, Ellis, Colt Ellis, in to punt. I mean, do you fake this right here? I think we go conservative. No. Good end over end kick from Ellis. This time Ponkilly receives it oh. and is met oh. immediately by. Apparently he falls down, but it's not called, so they're going to give him another five yards. <laughs> Referee Turf season. Monster gets Turf a Monster second tackle. Turf Monster gets a second tackle for the night. Down at the 24-yard line. Uh, FRI will take over at the 24-yard line for the Panthers. A decent return there, uh, but there at the end, Ezo Harding Eagles were able to bring him down before he gained too much of that punt back. Seven minutes, 15 seconds left in the second quarter. Uh, both teams have all three timeouts left, and uh, Ezo Harding Eagle defense steps in their big 4-3 again. See if uh, quarterback his song can take another drive or if we can meet him and uh, try to cut this one short. Eagles drop into coverage. Ball's given to the fullback right up the middle, and he's met immediately by linebacker, I believe, is number 20. Ball comes loose. And before they can make any run, referee blows the signal. They're going to confer to see who the ball belongs to. It did look like Ezel Harding returned. Uh, did recover the fumble, and they're going to give it to and us. They I are going to give it to be a turnover. Harding. Great fumble recovery there. I don't see who picked a it little, up. A little indecision there. The ref finally signals that it is, in fact, Ezel Harding's ball. He's holding his hand up to indicate that it is Ezel's ball. FRA's coach is not very happy about this call. However, we're going to go ahead and say, there we go. We got that one back for the two push-offs. <laughs> Absolutely. Caldwell in, handoff, it's a fumble to the fullback, uh, falls on it immediately, and uh, we do hold that back. It looks like we caught a little light there, caught a little break, and then we can't seem to do anything with it, Robert. That's exactly right. They're getting some pressure right there up the middle as soon as the center hikes the ball. I mean, they're just getting that pressure right up there. That's what caused that fumble. Sure did. The hand was to, handle was to Williams. He fumbles it for a short loss. Caldwell looks in, receiver either side, eye formation set. The pitch is to the left. Ball goes to number 44, Dorian Perry. No, sorry, Dorian Banks. Dorian Banks. With a small gain there. Looks like the referee will spot the ball at the 27-yard line for a third down and about 10 yards. Looks like Coach Hall is trying on the inside, trying on the outside, sweeping left, sweeping right, and there's just not really a lot budging from this Panther defense, Robert. That's about right. They're setting the edge, FRA, pretty well. Two running back set. Caldwell makes a seven, eight-step drop. He's going to scramble. He's got room to run. He's going to take it around the outside. He does Gets have a speed. great block on the outside. The referee blows the ball out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. He might have gotten that first down. I right think there. he might have gotten that. We'll make the call. We're going to call the first down. We're going to get a Ladies measurement and here. That is. Oh, no, they moved the chains. They don't need a measurement. That's going to be another O'Charlie's first O'Charlie's down. O'Charlie's first down. Excellent call Beautiful. There. Okay, with little signs of life here, Ezo Harding uh, offense moves in. Caldwell in to take the snap. He's got receivers either side. Inside Two running the backs. red zone. Handoff. Handoff to 44. Dorian. Good move. Makes a good move on the linebacker. About gets around him and then shoestring oh, tackle. And then Dorian Banks is able to just fight for another yard, but then met and dropped just before getting across the goal line. Ball's inside the 10 yard line. He's got a second down here, about four yards until the first down. This is a good second down because we've got room to get that and then can make a drive in for the end zone. FRA is just giving the outside here on a throw. 
And straight, straight up, up the middle. Again. Straight up the middle to number 44, Dorian Banks. The give is for a big Ezel Harding Eagle touchdown. First of the night for Dorian Banks. He is met at the sideline by Jordan Whitaker with a big celebration. Uh, what a good-looking run there, Robert. That was great. Right up the middle. It was a blast. Just right up the middle. Sure did. That's an old Madden term. That's the right. Blast. That's right. The blast. That's right. The blast. I like the call there. On to a tenth the point after. Ezel Harding will pause to see. McLean's kick is up. Signal from the referee is that it is good, which brings in. our uh, score 14 to 7 in favor of the Panthers. Ezel Harding scores on a Dorian Banks run up the middle. We've got five minutes, 14 seconds until the second half. Uh, we'll take a pause just for a second, and uh, we'll be back right back. And we're back live with our score 14 to 7 in favor of the FRA Panthers. We've got 5 minutes, 14 seconds left until halftime. What a good looking drive uh, Coach Hall and the Ezel offense put together there, Robert. I was, uh, it's all runs. You just pound it in, see whether or not you can stop them. And FRA, even though they set the edge early, just has not been able to do it. However, most of those runs right up the middle. They sure were. Which is great for Ezel Harding. One good, well, frankly, more than good, a great scramble by Ryan Caldwell. Got to the outside, got the first down on a, like, third and 12. Sure did. And that set up the great score. Again, Dorian Banks makes a great run up the middle. Uh, first touchdown of the night for Ezel Harding. I hope we see more of that. Same life from the offense. Kickoff is to FRA. Ball is received at the 20-yard line. And he is met at the 35-yard line, brought down number 15, received that kick. Number 15, Hosea Baldwin, receives that, brought down by number 24, Brian, Brian Allison. Allison. He's a senior this morning and took a Bible test for me. Robert, he made, a great, get, oh, made an A. It was a good, good test for him. Proud of that kid. He was good in eighth grade, too. I'm was not he? I had, to, I had to design tests around him. Yeah, he does well in the classroom and on the field. We're real proud of that guy. I know his parents are as well. On a homecoming night, it's great to honor that guy. That's right. Him and Cranston actually kept getting the hundreds. I didn't know what to do with the test. <laughs> and his song in under the snap. Received a signal from his coach. He's got two men in the backfield. The give to the fullback, but the play is blown dead. Looks like we have a little bit of an illegal shift or movement on the line of scrimmage. Referee makes an e uh, easy call there, a legal procedure. Will be against the Panthers, will be a five-yard penalty. Uh, Ezel Harding will catch another break there as well. This is great. I, it might be a little more than a break. Ezel is, is faking the blitz and then backing off, and so if FRA, FRA doesn't know who to block, so all of a sudden they're going to shift around. Yeah, it looks good. It's a, they're playing with the coverage there. Coach Grimes seems to be calling a really strong defensive scheme. They're showing blitz. Half the time they're blitzing. The other half they Look are dropping this. into coverage. Crown the line. The question is whether or not they're going to come for it. Or if they're going to play coverage. And they Shisong are. They're going to come for it. He scrambles. He's got man baiting at the back. Throws a tight end right up the middle, number two. And he is brought down before he can gain any more yards by number 15, Elias Kane. Another big tackle by Kane tonight. See, the unfortunate part about when you bring, like, all-out eight, all of a sudden you have man-to-man -man coverage down the middle, and he just found him wide open in the middle. Yeah, another great thrown ball by his song, too. Ball was thrown right up the middle, met his man in stride, and he had running room after that. Uh, if it wasn't for Kane, Elias Kane would have made a great play uh, to stop that long pass play. So that brings up a first down and ten. His song looks over to his sidelines to get the call. Ezel Harding's got a strong front. Looks like they got about seven men, eight men in the box, faking the blitz again. His song's got his call, steps in under center, has two receivers to his left, two in the backfield. Looks like he's the, Oh, looks like oh, a pick, pick play. Off. He's going. This is it. Coverage. This is it. He's Let's got see lots of running room. It. It's going to be a foot race, number 18. His song, wide receiver, is going to be untouched into the end zone with a huge pick six for the Ezel Harding Eagles. Touchdown, Dorian Ezel Banks. Harding. Dorian Banks. Dorian Banks with an excellent score down the sideline. What great coverage. They've run man-to-man -man all night, and all of a sudden Dorian Banks slips into zone coverage, holds the sideline. The ball's thrown right to him. It's a pick six. It, it looks like the FRA player was going for a fade because that's what's worked all night. Instead, they tried to throw what looked like a little bit of a bubble screen or a short pass. Dorian Banks just sitting down right there in coverage. He did, man. Set in coverage. Great call by Coach Grimes there. 
uh, on that defensive play. In to make the, uh, the kick here, we've got McLean. In to tie this game up. The kick Down. is up. It's up. And it is good. Great field goal there. And just like that, it's a tie ball game, 14 to 14. The Panthers looked like they were going to get away easy tonight. But just like that, we are knotted up at 14. We're going to take a quick break here. It's 4 minutes, 19 seconds until the second half. 14 to 14 in beautiful Antioch, Tennessee. We'll be right back. And we are back live. A lot of excitement now. Zachary McLean uh, kicks the extra point, makes it a 14-14 ball game, and he sets the tee for a kickoff to the FRA Panthers. A lot of buzz in the crowd. They haven't seen a pick six like that in a while, Robert. Man, he was just setting up camp. It still is cracking me up. That, that got me pumped up right there. That was amazing. Uh, what a good-looking play there by the Eagle defense. The kick again to the deep back. Handles the ball at the 20-yard line. And he is met by a host of there. Eagles at the 35-yard line. He is dropped with a small gain there. And the Panthers will take over on offense. Uh, great defensive set. I think the quarterback probably is going to have that pick six in his mind and see if he can shake this That's exactly and uh, try to make a play. I know this. Uh, he doesn't want to throw near Banks again. That's exactly right. Now, however, what you saw there was that Banks sat on that route. He sat on that route, took it back. The problem is the fact that he left the fade wide open because we were playing a cover two. We sure so did. So when you played that cover two, that back set right there on the edge of the of basically the sideline is wide open. It is. So that the question safety. is whether they'll learn from that. Yeah, that free safety is going to have to cover some ground if we do play that short zone. Ezel Harding blitzes up the middle. The give is to number 15. And he is met at the line, 15, Hosea Baldwin. A uh, flock of eagles. A flock of eagles making the stop for a very short gain. I don't know if the quarterback's going to feel like throwing the ball again. With the night we had here, with the intensity of these fans and the nice glow from the Walmart parking lot across the street, it looks like he is going to have a hard time trying to make that pass again. Let's see if he makes the play. His song into snap. The counter play give to number six. And they've got good upfield blocking. He's going to have a big gainer there. And then finally brought down number 12 and number 11 in to make that tackle. Matthew Gnip and Jason Clark in to make that stop. What good coverage downfield. That's one of those plays where you punish him for getting through. Absolutely. Big handoff there to number six. Uh, he's listed as a defensive back and a running back, Casey Walker. Uh, he's a load right there, Robert. Yes, he is. It's looking like a timeout to Ezel. Ezel Harding will take a timeout, and with that, we will take a short timeout. We'll see you in 30 seconds. We'll be right back. All right, we're coming back in. Ezel Harding, FRA uh, is coming off of this timeout by Ezel Harding. Ezel Harding has two more timeouts left. Uh, FRA has yet to use one of their timeouts. They've got about three left over. Yeah, that was a good call by Coach Hall right there to call timeout. Let's see if we can slow this drive down. we got three minutes, 24 seconds left. See if we can keep them off the scoreboard uh, for the second half. The Eagles, Eagles did receive the first kickoff, so the Panthers will receive it in the second half. His song in under snap. Option. Option play outside to number six. Again, Cranston. he is met by Cranston Gentry Cranston in the backfield. 
Great discipline play there. The quarterback makes a head fake, tries to draw the defender. When he pitches it outside, Cranston right there to drop him in the backfield. That's right. FRA still playing this hurry-up offense. They're basically getting the calls from the sideline, forcing Isa Harding to keep their defensive formation in. They are. It seems to be effective for them when they can get the passing game going, but, man, their running game has really struggled. Uh, we've got seven guys in the box. Great coverage uh, here by those Eagles. Um, his song in to take the snap. Coverage drops back again. They're trying to disguise what they're doing here. That fade, fade route again. Pass again. This time he has no coverage from the safety. And he is in the end zone for a touchdown. It looks like that time Brian Allison decided to do the exact same thing that uh, Dorian Banks did. Sit down on that coverage and then all of a sudden the deep cover two formation. There's nothing you can do in that side. You don't. That safety is going to have to get back. Allison stops and does not make the play there. Uh, what a tough call there. He expected that there would be a, a safety coverage over the top and it just wasn't there. That's great exactly touchdown right. pass to Ponkilia. On to make the extra point. Ponkilia. I mean, part of the problem there, part of the problem there comes when you have like two men on the side. You've got like your free safety back, you've got your corner up, and of course he's, of course that safety isn't going to be able to cover everybody. You've got two That's guys right. flooding that side. That's he right. picks the inside receiver as opposed to the outside receiver. Right. Hopefully, Allison was hoping that coverage was going to be behind. Unfortunately, it just wasn't there. It wasn't there. Another great thrown ball down the sideline too. And just like that, it puts the uh, FRA Panthers on top, 21-214. We've got two and a half minutes until halftime. We're going to send it to a commercial break. We'll be right back. And we are back live with 2 minutes 36 minutes, seconds left in the second quarter. Our score is 21 to 14 in favor of our visiting uh, FRA Panthers. It's exciting. That's the one thing we can say about this right now. Sure I mean, seven points, great stuff. It is. It's the shootout tonight. We're going to see a lot of points scored. Short kick given, handled at the 30-yard line. Ball is bobbled out of bounds, which will go in favor of the Ezel Harding Eagles. We dodged a bullet there. Uh, just like that, we couldn't get hands on the on the ball. Uh, Robert, we were I think we're fortunate there. They had men right on uh, coverage, and we That's were able exactly to recover right. that. That's exactly right. Bobble in your hand three, four times, and all of a sudden it runs right into an FRA player and out of bounds. We dodged a bullet. Just like that, it's 31-yard line. Ezel Harding takes over on the offense. Caldwell looks over to uh, Coach. He's got his play. Uh, he will line up with two running backs to his, uh, to his rear side. He's got receivers either side. The give on the outside. 21, Blake Smotherman carries, is brought out of bounds, out of horse bounds. Collar. But this is going to be a horse down. collar right here. It was. He was brought out of bounds, out of, brought down out of bounds, so either a late hit or a horse collar. We'll wait and see what the call is from our officials. Personal foul. Horse collar. There sure it is. Called it. That's going to be a big foul. That's a 15-yard penalty on the Panthers. Ezel Harding will draw. Uh, uh, we'll draw the results from that. Uh, it seems like a horse race up here, guys. Uh, back and forth, yardage both ways. I feel like if we had the, the song Gangnam Style or something like that, we could play it right now. Uh, absolutely. With that personal foul, we will march across the 50-yard line. Isla Harding will take over at the 46-yard line of the Panthers. Caldwell does step up to his line. We are in hurry-up offense. Uh, Robert, I saw him practicing this this week, uh, this hurry-up offense. Quick hitters to the outside. Uh, draw, draw plays, plays up the middle. Um, not what he was looking there. This draw nope. play goes to Smotherman for no gain, probably about a four-yard loss there. It looked like FRA just sniffed that one out right there. They did. They're sitting on that handoff. Until we can make a solid pass, uh, it looks like they're going to be sitting on the, uh, the running game. With that handoff to Smotherman, he's probably going to be averaging, he's going to be having about 25 yards on the night, a decent night for him, though he's had much bigger. Uh, Quarterback Caldwell in. The give is to 44 Dorian Banks. He gains a modest gain back to the original line of scrimmage about the 46-yard line. It's going to be third and ten. This is going to be the chance that uh, FRA and Ezo Harding are going to have to ask the question whether or not they call a timeout. They do. 
as I say that. And uh, it's looking like FRA is going to call. No, Ezo Harding is going to call. Harding, yeah. We, we've got to play, and we feel like we're going to get the first down here. Coach Hall wants to keep the clock, time on the clock. And so with a minute 33, we will take a timeout. Our score here in Antioch, Tennessee is 21-214. We'll be right back. And we are back live. John Sullivan and Robert Lindsay here right across from the uh, Don Frudenthal Softball Complex. Caldwell takes a deep snap. Long pass play to the right side. And just Call off the, the hands. Incomplete. Number 80, it looks Number like. Number 80, Rashawn Perry cannot get, uh, bring that ball down. All of a sudden, it went into tip drill there for just a minute. It ball did. up in the air. Good to see the ball hit the ground since we couldn't recover it. And with that, the clock stops with a minute 27. Coach Hall has a decision to make. Is he going to go for it on fourth down here, or is he going to punt the ball away? Looks like he's bringing in his punt team. Robert, uh, I think he's happy with what he's got. I think he's going to kick the ball and see if we can play defense here and try to shut these Panthers down one last time before halftime. That's right. It's kind of like the Achilles heel here of FRA is the fact that they run the ball so much that means the clock is going to go down. FRA will get the ball back in the second half. A flag is thrown at the flag line of scrimmage. I wonder if we're going to have area holding there holding. or if we're going to have a defensive encroachment. We'll wait for our call. The ball is down by uh, Ezel Harding, number 24, Brian Allison, at the 18-yard line. We'll wait for the call. It's looking, Ezel's looking like it's against FRA. Personal foul against FRA. We didn't see what that uh, what that call was. We do know it's a personal foul. Not sure what the referee saw there. They're much closer to the play than we are, so we'll take it, Robert. Hey, I will take it every single time. That'll bring up, bring up a big first down for the Ezel Harding Christian School Eagles with a minute 19 to go. We are within striking distance. All of a sudden, everything's possible. Everything's possible. Still got one timeout left. Ezel Harding does. FRA has three. Caldwell in. He's got two receivers to his right, two backs behind him. He drops back. back. Looks like he will try to scramble. There is a flag called. It looks like it's going to be either a block in the back or holding. Doesn't look good for the Ezel Harding Eagles there because he's already – referee is talking to some of our linemen exactly and they back right. away. It looks like it's going to be against exactly us. Exactly right. We'll wait it's kind of one of those things. The, the trick here is the fact that he's a scrambling quarterback, and when you have a three-step three step drop and he don't throw it, there's a great chance you're going to grab holding on that play. And that's exactly what happens. Referee signals that it is a holding call. It will be 10 yards lost uh, from the spot of the penalty. And so with that, we will be at the 48-yard line. The referee winds the clock. Ezo Harding will take over first and 26 from the 48-yard line. Loss of uh, 16 there because it was six yards back where the holding was apparently. That's a tough, that's a tough call there. Banks drops back. There is a rush up the middle. Pass is intended for number 24, Brian Allison. He is unable to bring that down. That was a speedy pass right there. It, it did. He led him just a little bit far, and uh, Allison made it, ran a great route, but could not get uh, just far enough to get to that ball. He was double covered, double covered, however, so that's going to be part of your problem. He's throwing the ball in there as fast as he possibly can because there's two men on. Number 18, Zane Williams on with the call from Coach Hall. Caldwell will set step under center. He has receivers either side, two men in his backfield. Draw play gives to number 44, Dorian Banks. He makes a move on the safeties, and he is brought down right at the 35-yard line. What a great run there. He juked the, uh, the defensive backs. The clock is still running, and we see what kind of hurry-up offense we have here. Still running down about 25 seconds left. Going to have to call that play or call a timeout here. Looks like the play is in. Caldwell takes the snap. 
Drops back. He's going to throw it this time. He's got a deep route. Number 80, Rashawn Perry. The ball is picked off by number two, Ponkilia. He was out of bounds. However, it's looking like the ref is going to put him down at the four-yard line on the interception. Oh, what a tough play there. Ball was thrown fairly well, but it was into double coverage, and we just didn't have a chance to make a play on that one. you got to loft that up, get it to the sideline, outside shoulder, and then rayshon has got to th run through that as well. He does. Coach Hall does not look happy about that blast play right there, uh, trying to give some extra encouragement to Rashawn Perry to run through that ball. Uh, which will bring up a first down deep in the Panther territory. They have 10 seconds left. Uh, let's see if they play conservative and take a knee or if they're going to try to strike here. I mean, if anybody can tell our receivers what to do, it's a guy who played uh, wide receiver for Alabama. Absolutely. Coach Hall. Absolutely. He knows what he's talking about. And his song will take a knee to bring the end of the first half. Uh, here in beautiful Antioch, Tennessee, the score is 21-14 at the halftime. It's homecoming night, so a lot of festivities to happen. Uh, before we get to the halftime festivities, I do want to have an interview. We've got up here in the booth with us. Uh, someone that you've definitely heard a lot from uh, this season. We've got our director of alumni relations, one of our high school faculty members. Uh, the man wears many hats and does so much for the school. I'm happy to have right beside me Mr. J Jason Charlton. Uh, Jason, how's it going tonight? <laughs> John, it's going fine. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. We've got tent and food and everything set up, getting ready to host the alumni who were able to make it out to campus tonight. So it's been an exciting day. It's going to be an exciting evening and uh, uh, beautiful night for football. We're just uh, glad that so many alumni were able to make it out tonight. Well, that is wonderful. I do want to mention with his teaching duties that he has and extracurriculars, uh, Mr. Charlton is our director of alumni relations on campus. Uh, many of our alumni that are tuned in and family that are tuned in have been invited to uh, the game tonight and many events that we have. Uh, Jason, tell us some of the other events that we have going that will appeal to our Ezel Harding alumni. Well, one of the exciting things that we have, it's actually going on currently, but uh, our alumni will find out much more about it here in the next couple of weeks, is we have a survey that has uh, been developed to kind of get some feedback from our alumni. So that will be coming in the mail to you, and we're, we're looking forward to hearing your feedback. We want your honest opinion on your experiences here at East Hall Harding in some ways that we're really seeking to try and improve some of the areas that we really need to improve on mm -hmm. and grow stronger in the areas that we're strongest in. And we, we don't want to become lax in anything that we do, so we want to hear from the folks who have been through Ezel Harding. So uh, look for that in the mail and participate. It's an online survey, and uh, we're looking forward to that coming up soon. Great. Uh, I've got Jason Charlton in the booth with me here. We're overlooking uh, what seem to be the homecoming festivities. The Kings and Queen candidates are coming in. Uh, Jason, tell us what we can expect from the alumni chorus come Christmas time. Well, we've, we've asked uh, Dr. Jeff Rice, who was the choral director when I was here, so so many of you were able to sing under his under his direction, and he has developed a, an alumni course, about 40 or 50 of us mm -hmm. will be performing December 20th, we believe, at Unibaptist Church. We're going to be singing Vivaldi's Gloria and a number of other um, contemporary Christmas songs. We're really looking forward to that. We've been practicing every Sunday afternoon, 3.30 to 5.30. Dr. Rice is back in his element, and he's strapped back on the cummerbund, and he's ready to go. That is great to hear. I know that the alumni that are tuned in can uh, look for updates on when that will be. Uh, we hope everybody can come out and, and join us for that event. It should be a lot of fun, a great time to meet with uh, people you've seen regularly and people you haven't seen in a few years, uh, and at the same time hear a great concert. Uh, Jason, tell us what the uh, environment's like down in the uh, alumni tent right now. Have you had people stop by? Well, we're about to. We've had a few stop by. We've encouraged them to come up into the bleachers and participate in football games like they used to when they were here. So after the halftime festivities, we'll be hosting them food and drink, their families to be able to come down and get to fellowship with each other. Really excited. Very good. Well, with that, you can see in our camera screen, we do have the convertibles pulling forward with our freshmen, sophomores, and junior class attendance. And then shortly thereafter, we will be announcing our senior class representatives and the big moment of the night when we announce homecoming king and queen. Uh, I know all of our students are excited to see that. With that, we're going to cut our commentary for the rest of halftime. You'll be able to tune in to hear the announcing uh, from the field. We'll be back right after halftime. Riding in our second car are the sophomore attendants. Brittany Edmondson and Mary Beth White. This Lexus SC430 is provided by Steve and Jan Samuels. It's being driven by Mike White. And riding as a front seat passenger is Carl Edmondson.
Our third car now approaching carries the junior attendants. Miss Michaela Daniel Featherston and Taylor Lee Mitchell. This 2007 Chevrolet Corvette is provided by Frank Wilbert. It's being driven by Tony Mitchell and riding as a front seat passenger is Jonathan West. And riding in car number four, our senior attendant, Carly Nicole Adams. This 1965 Chevrolet Corvette is provided by Mr. David Smith. It's being driven by Doug Adams and riding as a front seat passenger is senior escort, Jordan Samuel Michael Bakke. Riding in car number five is senior attendant Lindy Celine Jones. This 2012 Shelby Mustang is provided by Robert and Gail Zika. It's being driven by Royal Jones. And riding as a front seat passenger is senior escort Jake Randall Williams. Riding in our sixth car is senior attendant, Hannah Marie Spence. This 2002 Ford Mustang GT is provided by Johnny and Suzanne Huffman. It's being driven by Mark Spence and riding as front seat passenger is senior escort, Austin Robert G. Riding in car number seven is senior attendant Haley Kathleen Sudbury. This 2011 Chevy Camaro is provided by Freeland Chevrolet. It's being driven by Mr. Mark Sudbury and riding as front seat passenger is senior escort Cody James Hyder. And now approaching is car number eight. It's our 2011 homecoming queen, Paige Moore, and our homecoming king, Bryce Cranford. This 2013 Chevy Camaro is also provided by Freeland Chevrolet, and it's being driven by Mr. James Moore. And now we'd like to introduce to you Ezel Harding Christian School's Homecoming Court of 2012. Representing the freshman class are Miss Demaria Vaughn, daughter of Demita and Maurice Vaughn, escorted by Mr. Al Batson III, 
son of Al Batson Jr., and Nina Moore. Also representing the freshman class are Miss Mary Catherine Willoughby, daughter of Brian and Jill Willoughby, escorted by Mr. Seth Wise, son of Clay and Christy Wise. Representing the sophomore class are Miss Brittany Edmondson, daughter of Carl and Stephanie Edmondson, escorted by Mr. Lucas Franz, son of Chris and Kathy Franz. Also representing the sophomore class are Miss Mary Beth White, daughter of Mike and Angela White, Escorted by Mr. Austin Bryce Cunningham, son of Ken and Daisy Cunningham. And representing the junior class are Miss Michaela Daniel Featherston, daughter of Yvette and Vincent Thompson, and Mike Featherston. Escorted by Mr. Garrett Marshall Ridley, son of Kathy Smith and James Ridley. Also representing the junior class are Miss Taylor Lee Mitchell, daughter, daughter of Tony and Elisa Mitchell. Escorted by Mr. Henry Jake Allen, son of Clark and Ju Judy Allen. Representing the senior class are Miss Carly Nicole Adams, daughter of Doug and Tanya Adams, escorted by Mr. Jordan Samuel Michael Bakke son of James and Lori Bakke. Also representing the senior class are Miss Lindy Celine Jones, daughter of Roll Jones, escorted by Mr. Jake Randall Williams, son of Scott and Ruby Williams. Representing the senior class are Miss Hannah Marie Spence, daughter of Mark and Monica Spence. Escorted by Mr. Austin Robert G., son of David and Cheryl G. Also representing the senior class are Miss Haley Kathleen Sudbury, daughter of Mark and Dana Sudbury. Escorted by Mr. Cody James Hyder, son of Emily and James Hyder. Let's have a round of applause for our Easel Harding Christian Schools 2012 Homecoming Court. The 2012 Homecoming Queen and King were chosen by the high school student body. The 2011 Homecoming Queen, Paige Moore, Escorted by 2011 Homecoming King Bryce Cranford will crown the Queen and King and present the Queen with a dozen roses. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Homecoming Queen and King are 
Miss Hannah Marie Spence, and Mr. Austin Robert G. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have another round of applause for Queen Hannah Marie Spence and King Austin Robert G. and their homecoming court. And at this time, we'd like to thank the following for making this year's homecoming possible. The flowers were provided by Rita Farrell. And David's Bridal and Men's Warehouse, we thank for the dresses and the tuxedos. For the cars provided for this homecoming court, we appreciate Freeland Chevrolet, Mr. Willis Frazier, Johnny and Suzanne Huffman, Steve and Jan Samuels, David Smith, Frank Wilbert, and Robert and Gail Zika. We'd also like to thank and appreciate the staff and teachers who helped plan this year's homecoming. Nell Birdwell, Amanda Carden, Nathan Daniel, Kim Gentry, Ethan Hufford, Casey Hunt, Elisa Mitchell, Bethany Oldham, Lisa Phillips, Susan Reese, John Suttles, Phyllis Woodard, Emily Workman, and Miss Katie Earls. We'd also like to say this year's Homecoming Spirit Week. The total competition for homecoming week, we had tied for third place for the juniors and the freshmen. The second place went to the sophomores for total homecoming week festivities, and the first place for homecoming 2012 homecoming week goes to the class of 2013, the senior class.
And we are back live at the uh, end of halftime. What a great halftime we just had. I don't know if you were able to tune in, uh, but we just crowned Hannah Spence homecoming queen for the class of 2013. Uh, and also Austin G, homecoming Austin king, king for uh, homecoming king this year. So uh, very exciting. I know their families are very exciting. Uh, all of our candidates look great. All the uh, attendants look great. The escorts look great. Uh, the cars look great. Did you see that Shelby? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want one. Yeah, me too. Mr. Smith, I'm talking to you. That was a gorgeous car. I'm not, I'm not sure whether or not we can do a uh, Shelby first down or anything like that <laughs> to get one of those. I'm not sure, but I'll take it. It'd be worth the effort, that's for sure. I uh, want to remind you guys our score is now 21-14 with and FRA Panthers the in tonight, the lead. The we will have a kickoff here. Ezell FRA Harding will be receiving the kick deep. The kicking off for Ezel Harding will be McLean. Deep Zachary to receive will be kicking off for, the for FRA. He's, uh, he's hit it about to the 30 every single time. He has pretty consistent. But he angles this to the Short 40. Short kick here. We get a hands on it. Can't do it. Ball is handled by number 19 of FRA, Chad Young. Handled well by the Panthers' uh, receiving number team. Will become first and 10 for the FRA Panthers. Uh, was that an Down. attempt at an onside kick there? I think it was. I think we're trying to catch him off guard to get some hands downfield and get on it. But uh, Franklin Rowe was able to take the ball and maintain possession. So they will start the ball at their own 40 uh, with plenty of field in front of them to drive. We'll see if the Eagle defense can uh, step up. Uh, Matt Hiss on quarterback again. He looks in and gets his signs. He's got three wideouts to his right. The give is to his running back, and he is met immediately and dropped. Number 12 and for the EZL defense. Jason, Jason Clark makes a stop. Jason Clark comes in big. Number 12, Jason Clark. FRI still finds a way to fall forward for about three yards. They do have a moderate gain there, but uh, if we can keep that run game short, that's exactly right. every time, I think that we've got a chance to make a big turn here on defense. Still pushing three receivers over there wide. Yeah, three right out to the right. His song gets his sign, steps under snap. This could be a quick wide receiver screen. They fake like it is. However, the underneath route, good defense. Yeah, Hosea Ball uh, gets up in tens for number two, Ponchilia, and it is broken up by number 15, Elias King. <laughs> that was a great, that was great defense right there. He did. He came in just at the right time. Any earlier, they would have thrown a flag, but he came in, got his right, big right hand around knock the ball out of the possession, and uh, bring up a third down and about seven to go. See, this is not as manageable of a third down, Robert, if we can keep them uh, to if we can keep them to these middle-range third downs, I think we've got a chance to keep them to the fourth down punting or maybe even a turnover situation. That's right. Number six, the one that gashed us, is now in the backfield. He is. His song takes the snap. Three receivers to his right. Pass is made to number two, Ponkilia, over the middle crossing route. What great hands. He goes wow. up, grabs that ball with just his hands, brings it down, and it will be a first down across the midfield. Uh, and they will have possession with a brand-new first down, moving the ball on the 44, 43-yard line. That, that was all wide receiver right that there. Was. That That's was a great play. He was outside of the body. Of wow. And uh, made a great snag. His song looks in from the sidelines to get his call from his coach. The receivers to his left, to the strong side of the field, the wide side, and uh, one, one man in the backfield. The give is to the man in the backfield. Handoff goes for a three-yard gain to the 40-yard line. Uh, great stop there by the linebacker core of the Ezo Harding Eagles. That's right. After you get gashed that one time on a really good uh, offensive play, just keep it standard, do your job, make sure you tackle, wrap up. Hardy, they are stop. going with these three wide receivers on the sides here. They are here. trying to spread us out and see if they can get another ball over the top. Punk Kelly has been tough to guard all night. Rishon Perry's got his hands full with him. Uh, that, that last run was stopped by senior Justin Woodard at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if the defensive line can step up again. Quick his step song, drop another fade. fade to the left side. His man's got him but throws it just out of bounds. Decent coverage there by Perry. Uh, but more than anything, the pass was just thrown out of bounds. He couldn't get to it. I mean, that's about right. He's, he's bumping and running there on about the first 10 yards. I mean, like, he basically, Pankilia basically bumps off Dorian, gets separation. He has about a three-yard cushion there. And normally, they're able to loft it right in there. However, he missed it too far to the outside, all the way out of bounds. Good call there. I had the wrong name down. 44 Dorian Banks on the coverage there, not Rashawn Perry. Dorian Banks, single coverage on the outside. His song in under center. He's got three receivers to his left, one man in the backfield. 
takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out to Number. his left, and he's going to keep it. Makes oh, a run and is brought in. down at the 37-yard line by number 34. The He's a hard Harding Eagles, 30, number 34, Daniel Williams makes the stop. Looks like he tried to strip him there and his song didn't like that. Comes up and they have a few encouraging words for each other but then broken up quickly. Loving encouragement, That's loving right. encouragement. Hey, love to see Eagle defense, defense exactly. go after the ball. It's good to see a exactly ball hawking right. trying to make a turnover. Uh, turnover turning to six points for us last, uh, last half. So uh, defense come out real aggressive now trying to make a big stop. That's going to bring up a fourth down in about five yards. They elect not to punt. Hissong in under the center. He's got two receivers to his right, one to his left, and his big running back in the backfield. Drops back to scramble and is met at the line of scrimmage. Breaks through, reaches for a first down. It looks like it could be short by inches. Depends on the spot. Referee's got a spot just after the first down. It is going to be short. The ball will be turned over to the Ezel Harding Eagles. Uh, what a great stop there, Jason. Uh, Robert, my bad. That's okay, no problem. It looked like even though he was going to reach out right there, even on his reach, it was going to be a couple inches short. But he, uh, he's going to be stopped at the 35. Ezel Harding turnover on downs. Great defense right there. It was. Bend, but don't break. They let him gain a few, but didn't get enough for the first down. Big stand there by the Eagles. Let's see if we can go to a quick hitter offense here. Caldwell takes a snap. The give to the backfield to Gray, and he is met just at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he picked up one there. There's a lot we can learn from these FRA running backs, however. They're, they're falling forward. They are. And that's one of those things, like Ezo Harding, we're going into the line, getting hit, and then unfortunately stopping right there. We are getting some yards on forward progress, so we got two yards on forward progress right there, but what we need to do is learn how to fall forward. Hit, fall forward. Go to the side, fall forward. Caldwell in with the wishbone. He's got three men in the backfield. The give to the deep man, formation. number 44, Dorian Banks with the carry. He gets about six yards, rattles off before he's brought down by the secondary of the Panthers. I'm not sure they heard me, but they, that was falling forward right It there. was falling <laughs> forward. Yeah, he did that. He's going to be about two or maybe three yards short of a first down. Going to bring up a third down. Big third down here to see if we can cross the middle of the field. Wishbone formation, man. I haven't seen that or heard that in a long time. I, think it's, I don't know if it was wishbone. I think it's <laughs> there, They had two fullbacks and a tailback. Well, it's looking like they're doing it again. Yeah, same set back there. Two tight ends in, no receivers. The give is to Banks. He comes around the end. Good He's run. by two of the secondary of the Panthers, but not after he crosses the first down line. Big O Charlie's first, first down. down. With that first down, Caldwell will step under center. He's got three men in his backfield, two fullbacks. And now I understand it's not a wishbone, moves to the tight end set. The give goes left around the end. Dorian Banks makes a strong run to the left side, met by number six of the Panthers and brought Dorian down Banks before making the first down. Hard Casey hard Walker on the six. stop Casey there. That was a great Casey is his name, not Casey Walker. Had it backwards. That's a great block there. I'm not even sure who on Ezo Harding did it, but I saw one FRA player going flying. He did. Great, great push by the line there. I think they've got a lot of trust in Banks when he runs the ball. Um, good setup there with two men in the backfield in front of him. Blockers both sides. Caldwell steps under center. He's got two men in the backfield instead of three now. A tight end to his right. The pitch goes to his right. Lots of running room here. Lots gets around the end. Shakes a, a tackler and is forced out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Now, we're, we're pretty much stacking in here. We're going run. No no play, no pretending right here. We're going run pretty much all the way. They are. We don't even have a receiver on the field right now. Just line it up, power mouth football. I think it looks good. And it's caught the Panthers off uh, balance. And with that, the chains move for an O'Charlie's. He's a hard first O'Charlie's first down yet again. You know, when it comes down to running plays, it's all about your blocking. And it what's is. going on right now is Ezo Harding. You're picking your man, especially on the toss sweep right there. Just beautiful, beautiful blocking. Caldwell gives right to the weak side. Oh, good move. In, makes a great move and is stopped just before he can get to uh, the secondary. A short gain there, and he has slow to get up. There's a flag on the play. This... Uh, this might either be a late hit or it could be a face mask. It, either way, it does look like it could be a personal foul. The flag was thrown in late, but we do have a player on the field. We'll pause until we can 
uh, assess the situation. Oh, the Personal foul the on the Panthers. He's not going to tell what it was. Could be some mouthing down there. Could have been a late hit. Either way, it's good to see uh, Banks up on his feet uh, coming to the sideline after that injury there. Uh, may have just got his bell rung, Robert. Woo. It could, have been, it could have been a host of things. Could have. With that, the referees will step off 15 yards towards the Ezel Harding end zone. Uh, with that, that will bring up another big O'Charlie's first down. Caldwell and the Ezel Harding offense will take charge once again, this time almost in the red zones, two-yard shot. Love it. Love it. We'll take, we'll take those first downs right there. Absolutely. Keep on making steps. Looks like Smotherman's in the backfield now. Smotherman in the backfield, two fullbacks in front of him. The give is to Smotherman to the left. He tries around the left side, can't get to the edge, and he is pushed out of bounds after about a three- or four-yard gain. Not a bad run there. He has uh, got speed. He does. A lot of east-west running, but not a lot of north and south running for uh, Mr. Smotherman there. Uh, but with that speed, he is able to rattle off about three or four yards to the outside. That's exactly right. It's going to be a manageable, definitely a manageable second down. So you have a little bit of an option here. The question is whether or not you want to play action, even though it's looking like we're going run and just sticking with the run. That's right. Big tight end set here, two fullbacks. The give and is off. to Smotherman to the right side. He beats his man, goes around the outside, is tackled right at the 10-yard line. And a big gainer there is going to be close to a first down. He does mark it to a first down. That will move the chains. Oh, Charlie's he's Ezel Harding, first down. Oh, Charlie's first down. Well, we're well within striking distance now, Robert. I feel like uh, Coach Hall is going to call in some plays uh, that will set us up for the end zone here. We're not thinking field goal. We're thinking touchdown. That's exactly right. Smotherman's still on the out. So, uh, Smotherman's still in the backfield, which means there's a great chance we're going to run it on the outside here. Ball is fumbled on the snap. Picked up by Caldwell, and he still moves forward for about four or five yards and loses his helmet on the way down. Some aggressive tackling there by the Panthers. Uh, Caldwell makes the most of a tough situation. It's a bad handoff from the center to the quarterback, uh, but he makes the most of it. One of those tricky rules that's going to be in most of uh, football at this point is if your helmet comes off, you're going to have to come off the, the field for one play. Absolutely. He's so good with the goes in. manager trying to see if he can get that helmet corrected. Uh, so let's see. Into the quarterback, number 11, Matthew Ganip. We'll take the snap. He's got two fullbacks, Gentry, and the fullback, uh, tailback is 21, Blake Smotherman. Ganip receives the snap. And the give is to Smotherman. He's met at the line of scrimmage by a number of Panthers. That's going to be no gain there. He might have yard, uh, lost a yard there on that play. He might have. It looked like there was some space to his uh, middle cutback. He didn't see it. And with that, he runs just into the back of the line and uh, loses about a yard there. It's going to bring up a big third down, five yards to go. We've got four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Uh, Dorian he goes in the backfield here, so our uh, north-south runner. See if we can get a push up there. Give this to Dorian to the left side. He's met in the backfield but shakes the tackle. Hard run to the end zone, and he is short by about two yards, maybe a yard and a half. Good carry there by Dorian Banks. And, uh, Robert, it looks like he had his man beat, shook a tackle, but they closed quick enough to drop him before he got in the end zone. That's right. Swarm defense by the, uh, by the Panthers. It's going to bring up a big fourth and two. Uh, let's see which Coach Hall, what Coach Hall decides to do here. Will he try to kick the ball? for a quick three points, or is he going to go for it? I think he'd go for it here. I think I mean. he is. Listen to the crowd. They're cheering for him to go. I think they're excited. We're excited. Let's see the play here. I mean, you know what's going to happen. Absolutely. They're going to run it. Powerful they're going to run it straight out. Two tight ends. Out. The give is to Dorian. He dies on the no, ball. Touchdown called by the good score. With that, Dorian Banks is across the end zone line for the second time tonight. Touchdown, Ezel Harding Eagles. And that ties us up, or that brings us to a score of 20 to 21, waiting on the extra points. McLean is in to attempt the point after. You don't realize how critical these extra points are until they're going to tie the game. That's exactly right. On to hold Matthew Gnip. Snap is down. Kick is up. And the referee signal the kick is good. And with that, we are tied 21 to 21. With 3 minutes, 46 seconds, we're going to take a quick break here. 2121, stay tuned. We'll be
for Ezell Harding. And we are back live. Zach McLean got the ball teed off, ready to kick off for Ezell Harding. Short kick to the right side, handled at the 20-yard line by number 15. Baldwin makes the uh, reception and is knocked out of bounds by number 34 of Ezell Harding. Great tackle by number Daniel, 34, Daniel Williams. As usual, the majority of the time, these things all come down on special teams to blocking, and FRA laid the wood they did. on number 44. That was a great block there. Uh, Dorian made his way down the field to make a tackle. Great block there. Good job for Daniel Williams to come in on the backside and to make that tackle. Our uh, statistician over here has basically told us that every Ezel Harding touchdown so far has been scored by Banks. It's a great call. Justin Woodard in to make a big play. Number 71 for Ezell Harding. Comes in, makes a big stop on the carry. Oh, excuse me, wrong number there. That is number 35 number for Ezell Harding. Daniels on the carry. Met in the backfield by Ezell Harding's Justin Woodard for a loss of a yard. I believe that was Justin Woodard that made that stop. Number 71 over there. Hitting hard, our senior captain on this game another big senior for the night he also took a bible test today and did great for me robert well that's excellent i mean yeah. it would be bad if somebody on here we'd have to mention that they did poorly on a bible test i know his song takes the snap the give in the backfield and he is so met immediately man. by the defensive line these guys are pumped up what do you think coach hall had to say to him during halftime i'm going to tell you one thing right now if he didn't say stop the run stop the run stop the run i am uh, the king of england yeah absolutely it looks like he uh, charged his his fellow eagles uh, we're going to stop the run we're going to make him throw the ball to beat us and we'll see if they can do that now his song looks over to his coach for the call he does two receivers to the right the very dangerous over to the right, big I number mean, two. Ponkilia is over there. If I'm going to guess a fade, it's going to go to Ponkilia. It's probably going to go to Ponkilia. It's going to be on the sidelines over here on the FRA sidelines where they've been very, very uh, forgiving. There's a draw play again to number 15 and trucked over at the line of scrimmage. Big defensive play for the Ezel Harding Eagles. And then a late hit call once again on the FRA Panthers. Big play made on the defense. Quarterback gets up and headbutts one of the Ezel Harding Eagle defensemen. Referee's right there to call, make that call personal foul, I believe is what the call is. We'll wait and see what he says. It's looking like it's going to be after the play, so oh, it fourth was. down. It was, uh, man, that was a tough call. That's bad port uh, sportsmanship right there. Big play on defense, big stop made. The quarterback got up and was not happy about the call. Kind of reminds me of FRA, FRA's old mascot. Oh, and he picked like it that, off, waved it off. Still a fourth down. Still a fourth down, though. down, but he waves off the flag. Says it was incidental contact, was an intentional contact, and uh, removes the flag on the play. I think I saw contact there, Robert. I, I saw a little bit, and I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Uh, it's pretty much, it was intentional. <laughs> it looked like it was. Big high fives on the sideline for number one, 71, Justin Woodard. The guy had a great defensive series exactly there, which right. is going to bring on the Panthers to punt. Deep four, Ezel Harding looks like. Late substitution by FRA. Can't see who's returning this kick. End over end kick, handled number by number 44, Dorian Gray. Banks. Stays away from it. Banks stays away from it. Kick is out of bounds at the 30 yard line of the Ezel Harding Eagles. They will take over um, with a first and 10 at the 30 yard line. 70 yards to go. Let's see if we can get another running score on the board. That would be absolutely wonderful. FRA starting to act like their old mascot, the Rebels. Good He's reference there, That's Robert. Exactly pulls right. one back from the archives. Coach Hall is on the sideline just as excited as can be. He loves to see that defensive stand there by his Eagles. Let's see if we can take some of that momentum onto the offense. Now, once again, we come out with no wide receivers. Big tight end set. Three men in the backfield. They're Looks still like dropping Caldwell's. back to safeties. They are. Caldwell still to give to the left side. Big play to Dorian. He is met finally in the secondary, and they blow the play dead at the 37-yard line. Big gain there, about seven yards reeled off on that play. You know, it's a tough thing for a ref to say whether or not your forward progress has been stopped or not. They're going to call it right there. It looked like he was still churning, but uh, we'll, we'll, give him, we'll give him credit. Yeah, it looked like he still had movement to go. I think the referee tries to protect the running back there, but he had room to go still. Play is blown dead before he's taken down. Once again, he's a Harding in the two tight end set. Three running backs in the backfield. Caldwell with the handoff to Dorian, and he breaks it free. Oh, and he is gone. Go. He is no gone. Touch him. And he, he runs off the 64-yard line, and just like that for the fourth time tonight, 
Dorian is into the end zone. Dorian Banks, number 44, into the end zone for the fourth time tonight for the Ezel Harding Eagles. That's going to put him close to 100 yards on the night, well over 100 total yards on the evening when you count that big pick six that he had in the second quarter. Uh, Beautiful running it straight sure up the middle. That was north-south running at its finest. It was a great run. One cut up the middle, beat the safeties. And he had two men chasing him down, and they could not stay with him. Uh, he outrun every player on the FRA defense. McLean in to add the extra point. The snap is down. The kick is up. And is good. the kick is good. And with that, we take the lead 28-21. to 21. We've got exactly one minute to play in the third quarter. We'll be right back after a short break and a word from our sponsors. And after that touchdown by number 44, Dorian Banks, we are back live. That puts him over 100 yards over the night. In total yards, Ezel Harding with the lead, 28-21. This kick goes deep, handled by number 15 of the Panthers, and he is tackled at the 30-yard line, uh, maybe the 28-yard line. Didn't quite get to the 30. And look at this intensity that we see from the Ezel Harding defense, uh, Robert. Uh, I see players fist number, bumping each other. Number six coming out, pads. super excited. You got to remember, number six is an eighth, eighth grader, grader, which absolutely. is going to be beautiful. We know he's excited to be playing tonight. Makes a good play on special teams, and so with that, the Panthers will take over uh, at their own 29-yard line. Got about 54 seconds in the third quarter here. Ezo running the ball, grinding the clock. His One song score takes up. the snap. The toss to the outside to number 15. Makes one cut and then is brought down with about a three-yard gain there. Baldwin gets the carry and turns it into a little bit of a run there, but doesn't get a whole lot, and the clock will can the stop right there. I wonder if we have a timeout or if they're still waiting. to. With that, they start the clock, and then the Panthers are right on the ball, ready to take the snap. And the referees blow the ball dead, and we may have a clock error. The clock has not been running when they wound the clock. We're going to take a 30-second break here. If you would stay tuned, we've got a clock issue. They're going to see if they can get that resolved. We will be right back. And we are back live. We had a clock issue, a malfunctioning issue. Uh, got that straightened out. His song drops back, connects with number 19, uh, Chad Young. Cranston Gentry comes in with the tackle. Cranston Gentry comes in with a big tackle, drops him with a gain of about nine. That will be a first down, but that receiver will think twice when he runs across the middle of the field again. So Cranston Gentry making a big stop there. WWE drop, number 15, our number 15, uh, Elias Kane. Looks like he has a little bit of a cr uh, calf cramp here. He came to the sideline. He's getting some attention from the training staff uh, that's here at Ezel Harding Christian School. His song steps under center. He has two receivers to his right, one man in the backfield. He will roll to his right. And he is Whoa! Sack from the Big sack. Excellent call by Coach Grimes there on the defense. Daniel the Thompson the bringing Daniel the wood. Comes in, levels quarterback his song. No way he feels good after that one. And that's the and fourth that, quarter. We've got the fourth quarter. Every Ezel Harding Eagle hand is holding up four fingers. We're ready to take this game over in the fourth quarter. Coach Hall's excited. 
The players are excited. Daniel Williams is excited. Robert I'm Luke's excited. Not. Are you kidding me? That was a hit. Absolutely. Blind side from the back. Crushed. That looked great. With that, we're going to take a short break. We'll see you in about 30 seconds at the start of the fourth quarter with the score 28-21 to 21 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Ezel Harding takes the lead. We'll be right back. And we are back live at the start of the fourth quarter. We've got 12 minutes on the clock. Our score is 28 to 21 in favor of the Ezel Harding Christian School Eagles. We have reversed the field. The Panthers are to our left, driving to the right on a big second down with 17 yards to go. After a brilliant, absolutely brilliant tackle by Daniel Thompson. Bubble screen goes out to the left and met by three Ezel Harding Eagles. No gain there, a very small gain. Looks like a, maybe a gain of two. Yeah, he may have picked up two there. Punk Killy has been hot all night. Uh, catches that ball from his song, but then got a hit immediately uh, and could not pick up any further ground. About third down and 15 here. His song looks to his coach to his left now, gets his call in, sends a receiver far out to his left. Man comes into motion. He's got two receivers to his right, one in the slot, and then a man to his left. He has one man in the backfield. Steps under center, and the line comes set. The Eagles drop back into coverage. His song takes the snap, looks to a strong quick receiver throw, on a quick slant cutter, pattern. And he is stopped right as he crosses the 50 yard line, which will be enough for a 50, uh, first down for this FRA Panthers. Man, normally he goes that fade route. He faked with that shoulder that came inside and he hit him right between the numbers on that slant. That's route. right. Casey Perkins coming in, trying to mop up everything right there in the middle of the field. He had backed off about 12 yards from his man. Unfortunately, on a slant route, that means he's got to cover everything in the middle. Absolutely. Left him wide open on an island. Two men in the backfield for his song. The give is to the fullback up the middle. He is met and knocked down at the 44-yard line, maybe 44 and a half. Good tackle there by the linebacking core of Ezel Harding. Cranston Gentry, number 20, will get credit with that stop. With that three-yard gain, that'll bring up a second and seven for the FRA Panthers. This song looks to the sideline to get a, the call in from his coach. Call is in. He's got two receivers, one to each side, two men in the backfield. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to number two. Hand off to the backfield, and he is met in the backfield and dropped by number 34, Daniel Williams, makes the stop there. Big play there by Daniel Williams. Two tackles on this drive already. He's making a big difference, isn't he, Robert? He is. He's bringing it in there. Right? Just excited. I mean, like you saw him as he went in for that tackle, getting everybody excited, getting everybody jacked up. Another big stop for the Ezel Harden defense. Looking like number two was uncovered there for a minute. Dorian Banks goes over and covers him. Hassan looks to the sideline, gets a call in from his coach. He's got two receivers to his left side, two men in his backfield. Uh, we drop three safeties, and we go all into coverage here. This is a coverage play. Hassan looks to throw. Good pickup. Gets the ball into Safe, the no, south safety part of the hill. zone, and then the stop is made at the third 26-yard line. I mean, you see that play all the time in NFL. I mean, they're playing cover two. You know that that soft part of the zone is going to be over there on the sideline. Number two is too good to leave all alone. He is. Like good that. call there. He is too good. He gets left, sits down in that zone. Quarterback hits him in the numbers. Easy reception for him, but I'm thankful to see the safety coverage. He's unable to get any ground made up after that. Casey Perkins, again, an eighth grader. Glorious on the spot. Brings us up to a first and ten. His song in under center. He's got two receivers to his right. The give is to the tailback, and he's met at the line of scrimmage and dropped 
by number 71, Justin Woodard, and number 34, Daniel Williams. What a great stop there. Defensive line stepping up tonight. That's right. You've got your senior leadership, Cranston Gentry, Justin Woodard coming in, laying the wood on some people. You sure do. And it got big things coming from the big freshman, Daniel Williams. 160 pounds, uh, freshman, 5'8". Uh, he's playing pretty tough out there. I did not know he was a freshman. He is. Good things. To, we've got good things to come from this guy. His song steps under the snap. Takes a quick drop and hits number two on a quick slanter. And he is dropped immediately by number 24, Brian Allison. Quick play there. Wasn't a deep threat, but he hit him again. He had man coverage out there. No safety over the top. So uh, very important there that Allison makes that tackle. He does and saves a big game for him. Uh, maybe even a touchdown. It's going to wind the clock to about 8 minutes and 20 seconds. His song gets the... The call in from the sideline. The Panthers come set. He's got tight ends on both sides. Receivers either side. Two men in the backfield. His song takes a snap and the give isn't to the backfield. He's got running room and he's going to walk into the end zone for a touchdown for the FRA Panthers. Brings our score to 27 to 28. We've got a mi eight minutes, eight seconds, or six seconds to go. Uh, good run play there. They, they kicked the ball inside and then bounced it outside, and there was nobody there waiting on him. That's right. I mean, when you're running bump and run coverage and also uh, basically they've been passing the entire time, you have to back off. You and do. so what that does is it leaves you wide open for the run because sometimes you throw to set up the run. That's absolutely correct. They, we were set up that well there and uh, couldn't make the stop. And to make the extra point, the snap is down, the kick is up, and the referees call that the extra point is good. Ponchuli has, has uh, scored almost as much as Dorian Banks has tonight. They both have lit up the stat board. That's right. Just one short. Uh, number 15 is coming with about three touchdowns. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit crazy here. Our, our freshman Banks has scored four, uh, one on a defensive pick six, and also three on his own. And with that, eight minutes and six seconds left in the fourth quarter. We're tied at 28 apiece. We're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in 30 seconds. And we are back live. North on the kickoff. Number 42 North on the kickoff. Uh, Ezel Harding 44. deep to receive. Number 44 Dorian Banks to receive Dorian the kick. Banks, they haven't kicked to him all night. I can't suspect that they'll do that again. I, I doubt it. They uh, they had a little bit of a squib kick on That's the last right. one. Kick it short to the left. Ball looks like it will bounce. Handled by 44. Oh, he got to get on it. Banks handles it. Gets on it and is dropped at the 11-yard line. That ball had a strange bounce. Yes, it did. And uh, that was difficult for Banks to get on. And he is, again, slow to get up after that play. Uh, he is helped up off the field by number 21, Blake Smotherman. Appears to be doing okay. And so we will switch the field. Ezo Harding Eagle D offense will take over and see if we can keep this run game going. That's about right. Uh, put us in a little bit of a hole here on the 13-yard line. Going to have to make up some distance. Our score is 28-28 to 28 in the middle of the fourth quarter. Caldwell steps under center. No receivers, big tight end set. The give is to the backfield to number 44, Dorian Banks. And the ball comes loose and picked up by who else? Number two, Ponkilia, right into his hands, and he is in the end zone. That looks oh almost exactly goodness. like the play in uh, the Dallas Cowboys game when it pops oh right out of Tony goodness. Romo's hands. Sure did. Great play there. Banks makes a cut, and the ball just comes out of his hands. Into the hands of number two, Ponkilia, the guy we don't want with the ball. He knows exactly what to do with it, doesn't he? That's about he? right. So he comes away with a defensive touchdown as well as an offensive touchdown on this game. <laughs> Ran it back somewhere around probably about 15 yards where he caught it. Ezel's got to find some way to get this ball moving. Hold on to the ball. Ball security is critical here. With that, the set comes in, nearly a block, but the referee signal that the extra point is good, which brings our score to 35-28. We've got 7 minutes, 52 seconds. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
And we are back live. Our score with seven minutes and 52 seconds left in the game is 35 to 28 in favor of the FRA Panthers. Uh, tough play there. We were deep in our own territory. Uh, had the play call we wanted, got into the secondary, and then uh, Banks got hit and coughed up the football. That's about right. Turnovers I mean, it happens. Are, it does. It Again, does. Banks a freshman. He's got he's got some time to here to learn. He's got some time to grow. It happened in the first half too. Uh, only we were the ones receiving that. Uh, this time, we were the uh, recipients of some tough luck there. Uh, number 42 of the Panthers kick goes out of bounds. The referee throws the flag, and we will see where we will get set here in just a second. Uh, talking about scoring on defense, we've got 14 points on the board tonight of defensive scores. Uh, looks like that uh, both teams are pretty aggressive on defense. Uh, we've got a pick six in the first half by Dorian Banks, and then right there, uh, the recovered fumble ran in for a touchdown by number two, Ponkilia. I wonder if these two guys are friends off the field. I don't know that they know each other. Probably not. It's FRA. We don't we don't associate with them. I don't think. Probably not on each other's Twitter page, are they? Caldwell takes a snap. The give is to number 21, Blake Smotherman. He is dropped immediately by several of the FRA Panthers. Uh, they, they know what we're doing. They're just pinning their ears back and coming straight for the run, Robert. And uh, it's going to take maybe some disguising or a play action before they actually slow down. That's right. I mean, there's uh, rush up the middle. There's no way really to counter when they stick nine in the box uh, until you start throwing out a play action to get them off balance. Let's see if Coach does that here. Offensive line comes set. Caldwell comes under center. He has three men in the backfield, two tight ends, one at either side. It is a play action. He has a man open, but he doesn't take it. He keeps it himself, scrambles forward, and is down at the 44-yard line. Looks like he had a man open there, elected to hold on to it. Scrambles for about a gain of seven or eight and it will bring up a big third down for Ezel Harden. Does number 80 was streaking right there on about the 45-yard uh, line. Rashawn was Perry had some, uh, some space in front of him. That's about right. Caldwell elects not to throw the ball. He goes in to make the scramble, picks up a few yards. Tough, to, tough call to, play, to make there. That's about right. I mean, it's hard. With a scrambling quarterback, you have to have your eyes down the field. That's exactly right. And you've kind of given away the fact that you're going to do a play action, so the question is, do you do it again? You still have to open them up. Caldwell to give to the left side. Has some running room to give. It's 21 Blake Smotherman, and he is brought down after a short gain. Needed seven for a first down. Probably got two and a half, maybe three, which will bring him well short of the first down line. That'll bring up a fourth down, and Coach Hall has time to make a decision. Will he go for it or will he punt? It's looking like we're going to punt here. Yes, looks like he sends the punt unit in. Ellis looks like he will drop deep to punt. And Ponkilia, number two, four, the Panthers will be deep to receive the kick. Eagles in punt formation, comes set. Bouncing snap comes to Ellis. He gets the kick off. Short end over end kick is handled at the 33 yard line by Ponkilia with a fair catch. And the ball will go over on downs and the punt to the FRA Panthers. They'll take over with their offense. Need a big stop here, Robert. That's exactly right. We need some uh, amazing defense. You pretty much know what they're going to do. They threw the majority of the, of the downs in the last series that they had. Uh, and they only ran on the very last one. So the question is, how are you going to load it up? Are you going to basically back off on coverage and then open up this number 15 who's gashed us three times for touchdowns yeah. as well? <laughs> or sure do you has. do tight coverage, bump and run coverage, and see what happens with Pankilia? They do drop into coverage. The pitch goes to the right side. Good blocking up front, and he's got room to run. Number 15 takes off down the sideline. He's going to be met hard by number 34, Daniel Williams. Man, he covers some ground. He covers some ground. It looks like he may be down with uh, injury to his leg. Uh, we'll take a quick timeout there uh, with him receiving medical coverage on the sideline. I don't know if they will. They will. They'll blow the play dead so he can receive some medical attention. That pitch went hard to the right, and they brought blockers out there, and it looks like we were just slow to recover. Yeah, I mean, we're, well, we're backing off in coverage, and, and that's part of the that's problem right. is the fact that they are, they're running three receivers right pretty much. They've got a tight end that they're rolling out. They've also that's got right. two receivers. So what's happening is we're backing way off, and because of that, they're going to have some open lanes, especially in the blocking game because they are excellent blockers. They're pulling their guards around, and especially on those tosses, their uh, fullbacks are really blocking well. They really are. With that big gain, it's going to bring up a first and 10. The ball is on the 26-yard uh, line of the FRA Panthers, not quite in the red zone. 
Uh, they've got the running game going. They've got the passing game going. I think it's time to turn up the intensity on the defense here. Yeah, I think, uh, well, you got to play aggressive. And the question is, how do you want to play aggressive? I mean, do you want to play aggressive as far as blitzing goes? Because that means that you're going to have uh, a wide open uh a wide open receiver most of the time. Sure. Um, so you definitely don't want to blitz from uh, Ponkilia's side because you know he's going to have a hot read over to that side. Or do you basically load up a box and try to stop the run and then hope that your man-on-man receivers are going to be there? And FRA, every time we've done that, has thrown a fade to the outside pretty much and gotten a very, very substantial gain. That's right. We're going to take a quick timeout, the official timeout. We've got a man injured on the field. He's receiving medical attention. With that, we're going to take a 30-second break. We'll be right back. We are back live with our score 28 to 35 in favor of the FRA Panthers. We've got five minutes and 31 seconds to go in this game. Uh, as we've mentioned before, we got a lot of great play tonight out of our safety, number six, Casey Perkins. Uh, he's been called up uh, from the middle school team to play, and he's making a big difference in this game. That's right. Almost ran down that guy, got beat on that uh, on that little run right <laughs> sure, there. Unfortunately, sure. it's bad when you get your name called for that reason. Absolutely. His song receives the snap. The give is up the middle. Hit hard at the line, but let go. Uh, didn't wrap up the tackle, and he's left with a couple more yards to pick up before he is dropped. And with that, that will be a first down for the FRA Panthers. Uh, good, tough running there in between the tackles there, Robert. Uh, well, could be good, tough running. Could also be no wrapping up. I mean, we didn't wrap up on the tackle. We didn't. Basically, he just slips right out. He did. The hit came in early. Came in hard. Uh, but with no wrap-up, he was able to bounce off that tackle and keep his feet moving. Uh, what a great run by this back from FRA. The clock winds down to exactly five minutes. His song takes under the center, has two men in the backfield, two receivers to his left. Pitches to his left-hand side, has room in the middle, and he is dropped right at the one-yard line. Uh, will not score a touchdown there. You know, when you have four sets of hands on you, and it started at basically uh, one yard from the line of scrimmage. You hope that you're going to wrap him up, you're going to get him so that you Absolutely. get a loss or you get just a net gain of none. Absolutely. We see a but, lot of ball hawking out there, a lot of hands coming down after the ball trying to stip, uh, strip the ball carrier, and he's been able to hold on. Baldwin's a nice little back for FRA. That's about seen right. some good things out of him tonight. Hissong in under center. He's got two men in his backfield, one receiver deep to his right. The give is up the middle, and he is met immediately at All the right. line of scrimmage and is gone nowhere. Driven back about a yard. May have lost two on that. We'll see what the spot is. Uh, good defensive stand there by the Ezel Harding defensive line. They weren't going to give up a yard. They weren't even counting on the pass, and they had everybody coming into the middle. And a great play call there by Coach Grimes. Second down, lost two. You're going to be at the three. You have a chance here for some play action. You know <laughs> you've watched this guy. You know he can yep. throw it to the corner of the yeah, end zone. We're, we, we know that Punk Killy has probably got a hot read on him. His song in under center. He's got two men in his backfield. He keeps himself, comes sneak. over the guard, and sneaks it in for another FRA touchdown. Good tough running there. Snaps the ball, no call. Catches the defensive line off, off guard, and like that, makes our score 41 to 28. Tough drive there. They had a couple big plays, a couple of uh, first downs when they needed them, converting on third down, and just like that, it's a two-touchdown ball game. That's right. I mean, they kept everything manageable on that one. There was no, like in the previous plays, has been like second and 17, That's third right. and 20, you know. So in this one, it was just everything was manageable, and they got That's it. Right. The kick comes in, and referee signals that it is good. Brings our score to 42 to 28. We've got three minutes and 48 seconds. Uh, to go in this game. It's, like we've said before, it's a beautiful homecoming night here at Ezel Harding Christian School. Lots of fans in the stands. Uh, great camaraderie going on uh, from our friends from Franklin Road Academy. Uh, we're going to take a quick break for 30 seconds. We'll be right back. No, 
North on the kickoff for the Panthers. We are back live. Number 42 North on the kickoff for the Panthers. Deep to receive, number 44 Gray, uh, Dorian Banks, and number 21 Blake Smotherman. Smotherman and Banks back deep to receive for Uzzell Hardy. Kick is short, goes to Smotherman, oh, Smotherman. bobbles the ball. And is dropped immediately. It's tough to take that ball in when you got a hard cast on your hand, isn't it? Yeah, the hard cast is gonna is gonna hurt. Uh, he's trying to trap it with his body, especially with that hard cast. Ninety percent of the time, it's gonna bobble out. I saw him in practice doing that as well. On kickoffs is where it really happened the most. On punts, uh, not as much. Yeah. Uh, another problem is the fact that pretty much when he gets the ball, he runs backwards. He does, and unquestionably, right. This kid has great heart. He's That's playing exactly with a right. major injury. He's out there trying to contribute. It's his senior year, too, and he's trying to show that uh, even through this tough injury, he's going to play hard uh, and try to make a difference in this game. Brings the first and ten for the Ezo Harding Eagles. The whistle is blown. The referees throw a flag, and it's going to be a substitution error. The referees step off the five-yard penalty, and we will have the ball first and 15. It will be at our 15-yard line. Make that the 19-yard line. Caldwell in under center. He has two receivers to his right, two men in the backfield. Takes the snap, quick hitter to his slot receiver. Good hands on the pickup of the play, but it's going to be for a short gain, maybe a three-yard gain to 24, Brian Allison, and then a couple of the Panthers in on the tackle. Defensive lineman got his hands up and tipped that ball. Allison with great resolve there uh, to, to keep his composure, bring that ball down. Caldwell drops back, scrambles, scrambles. to his left. Looks like he's going to go. Big tackle by number 32 of the Panthers. Number nine Caldwell's brought down after a very short gain. It's going to bring a third down up. Uh, tough play there. If he beat that man, he would have been uh, running for, for yards. That's, a, that's about yards. right. I mean, the only person he had to beat is uh, the safety there, and he probably could have juked him once and got him, but the linebacker comes in, takes out his knees. Yeah. Great tackle. It was. Good open field tackle there. With that, we've got a timeout called. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in this game. Our score is 42 to 28 in favor of the FRA Panthers. We'll be back in 30 seconds. And we are back live. Our score is 42-28 with three minutes, 11 seconds to go. The referee blows the whistle, start the clock. At about third down and 10 here. Caldwell takes a snap, rolls to Caldwell's his right. got to get rid Escapes of this ball. Escapes the tackle. Shovel pass to number 21, Blake Smotherman. He drops the ball. They're going to rule it incomplete. Smotherman holds his wrist as he gets up. Very slow to get up here. And he is on to his feet. Good, uh, uh, good play there by... Caldwell to try to make something out of nothing. Couldn't do it. Um, the pass is ruled incomplete. Better than a fumble because they would have been there to recover it. Definitely better than a fumble. Um, yeah, a little bit of the problem here is when he rolls out, he's got to be looking immediately to the receiver that he thinks is going to be open. And the exactly problem is the right. fact that we only have two receivers out there at this point. So right. who is really going to be open? Does a little improvisation. That's right. Improv there and uh, tries to make something happen and it doesn't. This time he's got four receivers set, one man in the backfield, no tight ends. Takes a five-step drop, throws it deep down the sideline. He's got Rashawn Perry, and it is picked off by number 29. Leaps up in the air, makes a play. 29 for the FRA Panthers is Torrey Smith. And uh, with that, that's a big turnover right there. Great thrown ball, thrown pretty hard, but he had double coverage and safety help over the top. That's about uh, right. As a wide receiver, when you see that, you, you do have to turn into a defensive back. Though. That's, that's exactly the problem, right. the fact that what happened was basically over his head. He knows it's over his head, and then he just doesn't go for it. That's right. Can't give up on that play. That's right. With that pass, that interception right there, the Panthers will take over with two minutes and 53 seconds. They are on their own 38-yard line. Our score is 42 to 28. Man, that's a tough play right there. That was. I mean, fourth down and 10. You're going for it. That's you're going right. for the first down. You're trying to get yourself set up. You're two scores away. Have to make a play. He had a receiver. Yep. Took a shot at it, but with double coverage, they were able to make the pick. His song gives up the middle to number 15. 
He bounces outside, and he's got some room, run, room to run. He is finally pushed out of bounds by number 11 at the 25-yard line. Stopped there by number 11, Matthew Gnip. Jose Baldwin on the carry there. Uh, they pick up yardage, and uh, they're going to run some more time off the clock. That's, uh, that's about right. I mean, if they keep this running game up, uh, the one thing that's going to happen here is the fact that they're probably going to run up the middle. They're probably going to get stopped a few times with... Every single time, that clock is going to grind down. That's exactly right. We'll see what Coach Hall decides to do with his timeouts here. Main thing we got to do is stop the ball carrier. That's right. His song in under his center. He's got a receiver to his far left. Two receivers in the backfield in the big tight end set. Takes the snap. The give is to the fullback, number 30, and he is brought down at the line of scrimmage. The ball's going to be spotted at the 23-yard line. He's got a gain of two on the play. And the clock, our biggest enemy right now, is still running. Ticking right. down to just below two minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. And, of course, the Panthers are in no hurry to get up on the ball. They're going to try to milk this for what it's worth. Coach Hall still has uh, two timeouts left. We'll see if he decides to use them here, uh, if we can get a big defensive stop. That's right. You get a stop here. You use that timeout, see what happens. Absolutely. His song with the pitch outside to number 27. He's met in the backfield okay. and dropped by number 15. Uh, number 15, Elias Kane, makes the stop. 27, yep. Carter Clark on the carry there. Uh, first time we've called his name in a while tonight. Um, and with that stop, the clock will stop when Ezel Harding calls timeout. Good call there by Coach Hall. Full timeouts with a minute 58 seconds. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. And we are back live. With that uh, timeout, Coach Hall has one timeout left. And uh, his song steps under center. Big third down, nine yards to go. We'll see if they elect to run the ball here, take some more time off the clock, or if they'll throw the ball. The give is up the middle to 27. Clark, good blocking downfield, and he will score into the end zone for another FRA touchdown. Handoff goes to 27 Clark there and he is untouched all the way to the end zone. Tough play there. I think that might be the one that breaks the back, uh, Mr. Lindsay. That, that might be. Number 14 was doing some excellent blocking on number 15 of uh, Ezo Harding. Sure was. Uh, just pretty much sprung the last 15 yards there. Absolutely. And with that, the Panthers will come in to set the extra point. Our score is 48 to 28 with a minute 51 seconds. We'll wait to see what the call is. Snap is in. Hold is down. The kick is up. And the referees call that the kick is good. And then with 1 minute 51 seconds, our score is 49 to 28. Ezel Harding will take over with the kick when we come back in just 30 seconds. We are back live to receive the kick for Ezel Harding is number 21, Blake Smotherman, and number 34, Daniel Williams. Kicking off for uh, the Panthers, once again, number 42, T.J. Norris. Kicks it right to Smotherman because of the uh, fumble last time. He wanted to see whether or not he'd do it. Smotherman and got a whole spin. A run and is finally brought down at the 45-yard line. They kicked him thinking with that cast he couldn't receive it. They forgot how quick his feet are. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, yeah, sure, he has a cast on his hand, but that doesn't mean his legs are broken. So he's still going to be able to juke you out, spin you, make you look like a fool. Absolutely. The question is, is it too little, too late? Hopefully we can strike quickly here. 
get another Hardy points on the board. And, 10. and uh, we'll see what our offense looks like. Easel Harding will take over first and 10 uh, at the Panther 46 yard line. One of the more difficult parts about Ezel Harding's offense is the fact that we're a run-first team, and so our uh, our passing gets a little bit complicated. So the question is, where's the passing going to go? Caldwell drops Inside back. of Caldwell's head, he, he needs to know. He decides to run with it. Is brought down at the 30-yard line by number 40 Caldwell of the Panthers. The ball down Andrew Lilly makes the tackle there. The clock is going to stop for the reset of the, of yeah, the chains here. quickly. But the problem is, uh, within Caldwell's head, they are going to give you 10 yards. Now. They're just not going to give you the big play. That's He's got to have right. inside of his head an internal clock to get rid of that ball. That's exactly right. Caldwell takes a snap. He's got receivers on each side. Drops back. Throws a deep fading pass. Has a receiver. Ball is incomplete. Two guys fight over it, and the ball falls to the ground. Referee Caldwell signals incomplete, so we'll bring up second and ten. Perry More importantly, Robert complete. stops the clock. That's, that, is a, that is a bonus of that. I mean, uh, he had a receiver over there where it was double coverage. Basically, FRA has dropped six backs at this point. They have. They're going to keep us from throwing the ball over the top. Uh, the running game will be open, but again, maybe too late to look to that. Caldwell under the center has receiver to each side. The ball is Fumble. fumbled and picked up by the Panthers. Number 27. He's only got one arm. He's trying to tackle him with that one arm. It's not going to work. FRA receives the fumble. Number 27. Carter Clark receives that brought down by number 21, Blake Smotherman. They will take over on the turnover there with a minute and 14 seconds in the game. This doesn't look good. No, pretty much at this point you run the ball. Um, Coach Hall can either choose to call a timeout if they've even gotten a block or anything like that, see what happens. Uh, but at the end of the day, they'll be able to run down the clock. So with one minute and 14 seconds left in the game, our score is 49-28. FRA Panthers will take over on the turnover. It will be first and 10 from, their, uh, from the Ezel Harding 43-yard line. And they do get into victory formation. All the tight ends in, lots of protection in the back. His song will take the snap under center. And with that, he will take a knee and the clock will run out. A couple things to look back on this game, uh, Robert. The uh, Eagles played great defense the first half, uh, came out strong the second half, but then at the end of the game just kind of lost it. A couple of big plays seemed to break our backs. That, that's about right. Um, we scored 28 in the first half um, and then didn't score any in the second. Um, FRA basically came away with their pounding run game, also uh, with their off-balance throw and, and run attack and so there was nothing that we could really do um, we stopped him a few times but not that's on right. some big situations that's exactly right uh, other big notes from the night we had a great game from uh, Dorian Banks he had multiple touchdowns offensively he had a touchdown defensively made a good pick six on defense uh, that was a big highlight of the night for Ezel Harding Christian School other big plays from our seniors tonight it's been an exciting night with our homecoming going on the crowd has been out and been loud and very supportive uh, we want to thank all of our parents and families that support the work that we do here um, we ask that uh, anytime you are able to come on campus, uh, come and give us a visit. We'd love to show you around. Um, we love our Ezo Harding family here, and as the clock winds down, we just want to say one more time, thanks for joining us. Uh, our game tonight is brought to you in part of O'Charlie's. Uh, we thank our sponsors very much. Uh, and look forward to seeing you next time here on Ezo Harding Christian School Network. I'm John Sullivan. Robert Lindsay. We're signing off. We'll see you next week. Good night.